wishbone? Get that off of my sourdough. Well, what do I do with this pot? Well, I can make a suggestion. Yes, sir? Wear it for a bonnet. What about the stew? Feed it to the gophers. Do you have any some gophers in mind? Stand pat. Hi, right, man. Twenty bottles of whiskey. Full or empty? Full. I'll see you and raise you fifty head of horses. <laughs> Live or dead? Broom tails. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call both of you and bet you my ranch in Kansas. Jim, you ain't got a ranch in Kansas. You ain't got no twenty bottles of whiskey. No more than Narbo here has fifty head of horses. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going to bet. Five cents. Five cents? Yeah, five cents. Clay, I think you're bluffing. It scares us out. <laughs> Weather coming up. Sounds like a storm someplace. Senor Clay, hmm? there is a saying I have heard. Cards are the devil's book. You read cards, Jesus? A little. Oh, well, would you read some for me? Si, senor. Pick two cards. Oh, no, this deck's pretty old. I'd, I'd cheat. Let me try another way. One that'll keep me honest, huh? Well, you got a real fast draw and a good aim. But people have been fired for shooting a night camp. Ace of spades. It stands for death. Who's death, Aces? I will look at the other card. The Jack of clubs. Well, what does that mean? It does not name the one who is to die. The knave is a wanderer. He brings death to him. Senor Death is right on time. Anything I can do for you? I said anything I can do for you. He can't speak and he can't hear? He deaf mute. What's the matter with you, Jesus? You look like you've seen a ghost. When Death sends a messenger, he does not listen, for that might soften his heart. He does not speak, for he does not wish to give hope. Like somebody wants Rowdy. Maybe you should not tell this man where Rowdy is. Why not? Because when the messenger of death comes, he comes on the wings of the wind. The sound of his coming is like the sound of thunder. Our visitor sure took off in a hurry. Or was taken. Maybe I ought to go into town. What for? Well, uh, Rowdy probably got himself into some kind of trouble. Well, he can mighty well get himself out of it. He's done it before. Yeah, maybe, but uh, I don't like the people that come looking for Well, you just stay right here. I'm the boss now. Deal with cards. Uh, I sure am glad to see you, mister. Uh, how are you? Well, uh... I've got a favor to ask. Would you mind searching me? What would I want to be doing a thing like that for? Well, I was on my way to my ranch, and they stopped to give some Jasper a ride. Well, the first thing I know, he pulled a gun on me, ordered me out of the wagon, and then drove off. Well, he must have wanted your wagon pretty bad, huh? Yeah. Uh, which way are you heading? 
Well, south, about 20 miles. You'll be passing me ranch. Now, you want to make sure that I haven't got a gun on me. Uh, you wouldn't want to happen to you what happened to me. Look, I ain't too worried about that, mister. Go ahead. Go on, search me. All righty. Get no gun. Come on, climb aboard. Oh, thank you. And may the Lord keep and bless you. going to hail. I learned that from my mother. <laughs> Don't hail too much in Texas. My mother wasn't a Texas woman. I wish she was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a day late already. I can just see Mr. Favor when I tell him that wheelwright who was fixing this wagon uh, was going to have a baby, and that's the reason I was held up and down. Hmm. Make it the wheelwright's wife, and he might believe you. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't believe me if I had a stack of witnesses as high as Cottonwoods. He wouldn't believe them either. Well, under the circumstances, it's grateful I am to you that you offered to give me a ride back to my ranch. Well, it's on the way. Well, it ain't as good as the ranch, but these trees will shelter us some. I'll see you in the morning. Sure, Mr. Yates. In the morning. Hello, is anybody in here?
Ah. Uh, you better, uh, better get your breakfast. Uh, muffins are getting cold. Anybody up there? him in. I can't fool old Mackie. Are you sure you did the right thing, Mr. Mackie? Maybe he come here to help us. He looked real nice. He was wearing a gun. Why didn't you stay in the bedroom? I get lonesome in there. We've acted without any proof. We ain't in the courtroom now, Judge. But the young man seemed to be quite inoffensive, Mr. Wells. Anybody that carries a gun when I haven't got one, Judge, offends me. Perhaps you're right. Shh. He's trying to shoot his way out. Those were rifle shots. They came from outside. Oh, gee, I, I hope they didn't hit him. Franny. But at least that proves that he's not one of them. The young lady is right. Mr. Mackey, will you unlock the door? Could be another of their tricks. Where are they mercy anyway? If they wanted to come inside and show themselves, we couldn't have stopped them. You know, they... they needn't have staged such an elaborate farce. We've got somebody locked up. We ought to keep them locked up. Because we're locked up too, Mr. Wells. What's the big idea, huh? You may as well put the gun away, young man. None of us is armed, nor have we any intention of harming you. Lock me in. I did. The name is Mackey, age indeterminate, thirst unquenchable. Mr. Mackey locked the door, but he also unlocked it. I'm Ms. Armstrong. I'm Franny Wells. This is my husband, Bert. My name is Thomas Larkins. And this is George Ash. And now, who are you? My name's Roddy Yates. I'm a drover. Just what is a drover doing here? Looking for a few horses that were stolen from me. When did this happen, Mr. Yates? Last night. In that case, we can all alibi each other. We were all here last night, as we have been for several days. Yeah, and you can believe him when it comes to alibis. He's a judge. Kind of judge that I come up before every other week or so. <laughs> I'm retired now, Mr. Mackey. What are you people, uh, what are you doing all together here? We don't know. At least none of us admits he knows. I don't get it. A uh, place like this out in the middle of nowhere. Well, if you think we like it here, why don't you get out? You tried that, didn't you, Mr. Yates? Um, you, don't, you don't know who's keeping you prisoner here? We don't know. At least most of us don't know. One of us perhaps does. Well, breakfast will be getting cold. Shall we go down? Yeah, well, there's got to be a way out of this place. Well, best ham and eggs I've had in a long time. Well, thank you, son. They keep a well-stocked larder, anyway. Tell me, Mrs. Armstrong, just how did you get in here? Well, I'm a nurse, and I got a message there was a man sick here. So I hired a buggy to bring me out, and they sent the buggy back, came up to the front door, and... Well, there are people here, but none of them sick. No one seems to know how long we're to be kept here. Bert and me was on a stagecoach going south to San Antonio. Two men held up the stage. They didn't take nothing except Bert and me. They brung us here. Did you look at them? Uh, what were them? 
What did the men look like? They was masked. One was tall and thin, the other was tall and fat. Well, um, that must mean whoever brought you here wanted you and your husband here at the same time that Mrs. Armstrong was there. What about this fella, uh, Mackie, that's here? Why not ask Mackie yourself, young man? <laughs> All right, Mackie, I'll ask you. Tell me, how'd you get here? Well, I wish I knew. I was having my second bottle in the Kinston Saloon and Gambling Parlor. One, I, if you'll excuse the expression, I passed out. That's something that usually happens when I reach a second bottle. And that's your whole story? No. When I woke up, my hangover was as usual, but my surroundings were not. Somebody gone to a great deal of trouble to bring me here. Now, you, I believe, said that you strayed in here looking for your horses? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Well, there's a stable out in back. You can see it from the kitchen if you're careful. Come on. Don't do it. Well, Judge, how'd you get here? Well, I was on my way home to Boston in my own rig. Boston, civilization, culture. The conversation about books. The latest poem of William Cullen Bryant. The opera, perhaps. Oh, blast it! I've earned it by all these years in this wilderness. Oh, it seems to me, Judge, you've earned a place in this house. How? Why? Well, you're here. Well, you people were brought here. I... I stumbled in here by accident. I... There are always two men with rifles outside. Good luck, young man. Help me with the dishes, dear. I ain't accustomed to that sort of thing. I'm an artist. You are an artist, and I am a nurse, and we are going to do the dishes. Well, being held captive don't seem to bother you too much, does it, Mikey? <laughs> Mr. Yates, most people are unhappy when they're away from their custom places, be it their, their homes or their stores or whatever. But home for old Mackey is where the bottle is. Yeah. Hey, Judge, uh, what about him? Well, he's a man of few words, and they're not always well-chosen words. Outside the fact his name is George Ash and that he was the first one here, we... We know nothing about him. What are you two whispering about? Where's my wife? Something Mrs. Armstrong with the dishes. I want you to stay away from her. Look, Mr. Wells, my job's with a herd on the Chisholm Trail, and that don't take me near anybody's wife. You ain't with a herd on the Chisholm now. I don't need you to tell me that. You say there's a stable out back? Yeah, I did. If uh, I go back to my outfit and bring back half the drovers, uh, if that's providing I can get out of here, I can set you people free. Well, none of us will oppose your leaving, Mr. Yates. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Now, you might have a chance. There we are. Look at all this food. Well-stocked shelves, huh? Plentiful larder, I suppose. It keeps the others pretty happy. Sometimes I wish that I were more interested in food. Where does this uh, all come from, anyway? Oh, a tall, thin man brings his supplies every morning. A tall, thin man with a rifle. He don't say nothing. Don't even answer when you talk to him. My dear, he's a deaf mute. Well, the least he could say is good morning. You know, I'll bet he can't talk. Uh, yeah, well, that's probably why he's the jailer. Is this the door, uh, say, leads out the stable? Yeah, it's right out there. But it isn't locked, but then neither's the front one. I'd give some thought to it before I walked out there. Are you trying to discourage me? No, no, I... no. You go right ahead. After all, how long can the supply of liquor here last? Wait a minute. Good luck. Oh, thanks.
dioxide. That spirits of ammonia, strong enough to wake the dead. Although I don't know how long it keeps him away. How'd they get back in here? The tall, thin one brought you in the front door, dropped you, and then went out again. Funny thing, they let you get out as far as the stable. What's so funny about that? Maybe they want to have a little talk with you. All I know is when I got in that stable, somebody hit me on the head. We've only your word for that. You like to feel the lump back there? None of us have been permitted to even touch these curtains, and yet they let you go out of the house. You returned, of course. But there's still a question to be answered. Yeah, well, you better ask the boys out there with the rifles. You still got a gun. Why didn't they take it from you? No idea. The reason could be because you're in with them. I ain't in with nobody. That being the case, you won't mind turning it over to me. Yeah, I'd mind. You're turning over that gun. Mind or not? We've got more than guns to worry about. Yeah, what's that? You come and see. Every bit of it. And so the poor doggy had none. said nobody was to go after Rowdy. He meant it. Oh, that was just talk. Mr. Favor said any kind of trouble Rowdy got into, he got into it by himself. He can get out of it by himself. Yeah. I guess you're right, Joe. Uh, it's kind of foolish of me to go helping Rowdy, especially since I'm after his job. I'd say it's kind of foolish. Yeah, real dumb, considering that my chances are a lot better when he's gone. You know, I got one problem, though. I want to take his job away from him while he's here, rather than when he's lost and gone somewhere. We'll have to ration it very carefully. Oh, for how long? I don't have to count me in on the water ration. We were all brought here, kept prisoner here, and now it appears we're going to be starved to death. We'll die of thirst long before we starve. Bert! Oh, shut up. Well, I got here by accident, but uh, it seems to me there'd be a reason why the rest of you all wound up here. But what reason? I don't know, but... Maybe if you got together and uh, compared notes, you might come up with an answer. And maybe that answer might just uh, tell us how we're going to get out of this mess. I think maybe we ought to try. Yeah, you would. Well, we'll all be more comfortable in the parlor. Besides, no one will have to guard the water. May I have the honor, ma'am? I'm very anxious to explore Mr. Gates' theory. Because of my seniority, for no other reason, I'll take the chair. Mrs. Armstrong, you're a nurse. Now, where has your work taken you? I was born in Texas. My husband fought with the Confederate Army, and then after he was killed at the Battle of Vicksburg, I became a nurse. I've never been out of Texas in my life. Thank you, Mrs. Armstrong. And uh, what about you, Mr. Mackey? I don't know any of you. I'm beginning to wish I'd never seen any of you. I do know every bar between Abilene and the Mexican border. 
Had plenty once. Bartenders have it all now. That's the end of my story. Mr. and Mrs. Wells? We're, uh, we're entertainers. Burton Flanny. Comic impersonations, popular songs, and funny sayings. Uh, for example, I remember one time when I was riding through the sand hills just outside of El Paso. Well, that must have been right nice for you. Why, it wasn't nice at all. The wind had been blowing up sandstorms for three days. And remember, this here was in Texas. What happened then? Well, as I was riding it along, I see a man's hat lying on top of a sand dune. So I ride over to it, get off, pick it up. What did you find? Found there was a man's head in it. Heavens, how dreadful. So I scratched the sand out of his eyes, ears, and mouth with my fingers. I figured the first thing he'd say would be, thank you. What did he say? He said, get a shovel. I'm on horseback. <laughs> <clears throat> they, they laugh a lot at that one down in the southern part of Texas. Fernie does impersonations. I, I don't suppose any of you would be interested in seeing her do an impersonation. Have you done most of your entertaining in Texas, Mr. Wells? We, we've done it all over. West, east. And what about you, Mr. Ash? Where I've been and where I'm going is nobody's business. Are you sure you're going anywhere? I've been a lot of places, Judge. But I don't know anybody who would want to coop me up in a house and starve me to death. You have no enemies? I've got a lot of enemies. But they'd all come after me with guns. I was a judge in northern Texas for 24 years. I was born in Boston, educated at Harvard. I'm afraid we, we don't have anything in common. Now, Mr. Yates, we know that you're a cattle drover. Can you add anything? Nothing. Well, I see no point in waiting up for dinner. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bert? Yeah, yeah. Good night, everyone. Pleasant dreams. Well, I'd ask you gentlemen to join me in a drink, but I don't... I wouldn't want to be any one of us, but least of all would I like to be that one. Good night, Maggie. Uh, you go on to bed, but don't worry. You know my aversion to water. I'll be right on guard here if anybody decides to take a drink during the night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good night. Armstrong, Judge Larkin, and Mackey. Thanks for the visit. I see you're not wearing your knife, Mr. Yates. Yeah, I don't know if it's a surprise to anyone, but that deaf mute paid me a visit last night. Huh? Oh, why wake you, Mr. Yates? You're sorry, ain't you, Franny? Sorry? About what? Marrying me. I don't amount to much. The act don't amount to much. It's good enough. 
I've seen the way you've been looking at that drover. That don't mean a thing. Not to him. Maybe not even to you. But me? I'd give my life if you once look at me like that. Offering your life right now don't mean very much. But just to sit here. Look. It's daytime outside. There's light. Why should we sit and hide in here behind drawn curtains, breathing stale air? Hmm. Don't touch that shade. I'll show you who's afraid. I didn't hit the bone, but I'll need water. I must be very painful. The water you're going to use on him is all the water we got left to drink. He's your husband, ma'am. If he got himself shot trying to help us or even trying to escape, I might feel sorry for him. But what he done was stupid, because he's jealous. Jealous of every man who ain't afraid of his own shadow. How are you feeling, Mackie? Well, I still have a couple of drinks left. I only have one drink left. I've been to livelier funerals. I think I'll share Mr. Mackey's last drink. Have you ever been in jail, Mr. Yates? Yeah, a few times. It's a prisoner of war. Then this is your first time in condemned row. I see you've been at my liquor, Mr. Yates. I've been at your bottle, Mackey, but there ain't no liquor in it. Tastes just like watered-down coffee to me. In that case, there's no point in pretending any further, is there? Mr. Mackey, what do you want of us? Your lives. I'm afraid I've lied to all of you. My name isn't really Mackey at all. It's John W. McKinnon. Does that suggest anything to any of you? Perhaps I'd better refresh your memories. Kylo! Put it down the table there. Go on back outside. My orders are the same. Anyone coming out of the house is to be shot down. That's what you're paying me for. I had a son once. His name was Edward J. McKinnon. Had he lived, he'd be 26 years old. He died when he was 19. Well, what's that have to do with us here? Don't be impatient, Mr. Yates. As I said, he died when he was 19. I had great plans for him. I was wealthy, powerful. He could have become my successor. Extended my power, he'd have been a prince. What is your power, Mr. McKinnon? Ownership. I own stocks in every railroad that spans this country. I own shares in every mining enterprise from the silver mines of the south to the copper mines of the north. All these would have gone to my son. But as I said, he died when he was 19. What, do you think one of us here killed him? All of you killed him. I'll admit it wouldn't have been possible if he hadn't been the romantic young fool that he was. He wanted thrills and excitement. Wasn't interested in power, so he ran away. I sent men after him to bring him back. That was seven years ago. You're the ones who helped him escape my men. That was my son, Edward. Now do you remember? I never saw the kid before. Like both bullets hit him. And he's the first to go. The rest of you will follow in due time. What did he do to your son? Let's proceed in order, shall we, Mr. Yates? It begins with you. Look, I told you I never saw the kid before. Seven years ago, you were in the town of Yuma in the Arizona Territory. 
Yeah, that's right. I was a prisoner of war there. One particular evening, you were in the Silver Dollar Saloon in Yuma. Probably was. So what? You offered a young man a drink. What's so unusual about that, huh? While he was drinking with you, three of my men entered that saloon. They wanted to bring him back to me. You interfered. Wait a minute. I still don't recognize the face, but I remember there was a brawl that night, yeah. Three uh, Jaspers came in, tried to jump a kid I was having a drink with. You interfered? Yeah, I would do it again, too, Anytime three men jump one. You helped my son escape. He ran out of that saloon and into the night. That's right, I, I never saw him after that. Mrs. Wells, you were the next one to see him. He was just a kid, and so scared. You worked in that saloon, didn't you? Yeah, I worked in that saloon. You hid my son from the men who sought him. The men who were going to bring him back to me. I just give him a place to hide out for a night. I feel sorry for your husband. What are you sorry for me for? You married very unwisely. I'm not discussing your wife's character. I am discussing her role in the death of my son. In marrying her, you assumed a share in her fate. That man lying dead out there, George Ash, a criminal with a long record. He persuaded my son to join him in a bank robbery. During the holdup, the night watchman was killed. I don't know whose finger pulled the trigger that killed him. I don't care. My son was wounded during that holdup. He sought shelter from a Mrs. Armstrong. He came to me. You nursed him back to health. I'm a nurse. And then you turned him over to the sheriff. When I found out he was wanted for murder. You turned him over to the sheriff. He was using the name of Edward Walsh. He was tried before me, found guilty, and I pronounced sentence on him. Death by hanging. Death by hanging. It took years to get you all together here. Now I'm going to give you the justice that you deserve. You, you, you're insane. The kid told me his mother died when he was born. He said in all his life, nobody had ever showed him any tenderness. Your son told me about you, Mr. Mackey. About a father who wasn't interested in his son, but in an instrument for increasing his power. The one thing he couldn't tell me about was his father's love for him. I visited your son in his cell, Mr. McKinnon, while he was waiting for the hangman. He prayed for the salvation of his father's soul. He blamed you alone for his tragic situation. Lies! That's a rotten, sniveling lies! You're trying to save your own miserable hides! But it's no use. George Ash was the first to go. Who'll be the second? <laughs> I think I'll let you decide that among yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'll enjoy that. Till tonight. Now, where do you suppose he could be? You want to go look for him? But we're not obeying instructions. We haven't chosen his next victim. Let him do it himself. If we don't give him a name, he may kill all of us. General idea anyway, ain't it? Oh, I got the general idea. If you hadn't helped his son escape, he may never have got to Franny or Mrs. Armstrong, and the judge wouldn't have had to sentence him to death. I say you ought to be the first one. Ain't I right, Judge? If one must, Mr. Yates has my vote. That ain't fair. I suppose you'd like it if I went first. No. But I'd like it if you offered to go first. Doesn't seem to me that it makes any difference who dies tonight. He's going to try and kill us all anyway. We can pray, Mr. Yates, that a prairie fire will drive Mr. McKinnon and his men away. Or that a sudden change of heart... Recognize me, son? I'm the United States Cavalry riding to the rescue. Oh, he has a quite a bruise here. You alone? I've never been loner in my life. You just made about the dumbest mistake you ever made in your life. Hmm? You'll probably die here with the rest of us. Hmm? There's nothing we can do about it. We're in the hands of a madman. He'll listen to no one. You know? I 
wonder about that. Why not light more lamps? The atmosphere needn't be so funereal. Or perhaps it should be. Ah. The newcomer. It's unfortunate that you blundered in at a time like this. Well, have you chosen yet? If you're delicate about seeing someone killed in front of your eyes, you needn't worry. The person of your choice will merely be invited to step out the front door. You can uh, still change your mind, you know. Why should I? As far as you're concerned, I'm the lord of life and death. Primarily of death. Nothing alive can stop me. What about something dead? The dead have their own affairs to look after. I think there's something here you ought to uh, see, Mr. McKinnon. No, I mean, uh, you're looking the wrong way. Over there. This is a dream. A delusion. I will not be mocked by a delusion! Did you really think you could kill me again, Father? I never killed you, Edward! Not with a bullet, Father. Or with a rope or a knife. But you killed me. No! I have come back, Father. Because I'm your father. But you know I always wished you well. I have come back because I hate you. I hated you in life, in death. My hate no. will not let me rest. I hate you now. No! You were just great. Friendly. Friendly. Uh, what? Do you handkerchief? Friendly. You all right? Oh, oh, you're lucky. He just grazed you. It ain't bad. Bert, honest. Are you sure? <laughs> you had me real worried. That Mackie. I... Oh, him. <laughs> Honey, you know I could always handle a heckler. Oh, uh, you. I've never seen such a ham bone. Why, I think up a good line. She's got to think up a better one. I work out a slick piece of business. She can't rest until she's done the same. Why, I can't even get shot without she has to talk. Talk. <laughs> Get them to the law and get back to the herd. I'll have been gone longer than a week. The was gonna kill me. Or fire you. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, look, if he's gonna fire you, he's got to fire me right along with you. You all right? Oh, you're fine, thanks. Oh, Mr. Yates, I... I ain't sore about you anymore. Well, I'm glad. Well, say that, uh, that story you told the other night about the fella being buried up to his neck in the sand? Yeah. Well, I wasn't in, uh, too much of a mood for laughing at but, you know, that's a real, real funny story. Thanks. You sure told it real good, honey.
thing you got to have to keep the cattle moving is men. The trouble with that is each man thinks without him everything can come to a standstill. Fact is, there's only one man the drive can't do without. He's the one who keeps the men going to keep the cattle moving. He's the cook. That's my job. My name's Wishbone. Fear the gill favor of it. The idiot beside me is the cook's lost mush. Looks like he's been busy. Hey. Well, I'm sure glad to see you, fellas. Us? Yep. Oh, uh, we're just looking for Dennis. Well, hold on. Hold on. Well, what do you mean, hold on? Hey, look, uh, Sheriff, uh, we're not out for any trouble. So don't set us up for any. We're not going to set it up. Just don't you cause it. It's, it's all very simple, Sheriff. My friend here, he got a toothache. Maybe you got somebody here in town can help him out. Well, there's a lot more important things going on with toothache. A murder trial. Murder trial? Well, I still don't see what that's got to do with We're impounding the both of you. You're whating us? Impound you. All right, you're impounding us. But what's that mean to when I get my tooth fixed? That means you're both going to stay here. Both going to be jury men on a murder trial. We can't serve on jury. We're not even residents of this area. When did you cross the Oasis River? Oh, about three or four weeks ago. Well, then for three or four weeks, you've been resident of this county. Look, I don't give a hang about your jury. I'm getting my jaw fixed first. Uh, sure, sure, but you'll have to go over to jail to get it done. You see, uh, Gene Madden, our dentist doctor undertaker, he's the one that's waiting trial for murder. Jed, we got our jury. See that the horses get over the liver stable. Gene, I brought the patient. Can you take care of him? Oh, yes, friend. Here, sit down here. Tom, could I have my bag, please? There we go. Now lean back, open wide. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh! Oh, yes, Frank, you got a lot of trouble. Considering the kind of trouble you got, I don't like to complain about mine. Turn around. Open wide. Now, this is going to hurt more just for a second, and then it'll be all gone. Say, hey, sir, how long will this trial take? I probably should get word back to my boss. Well, I figure it's going to be over in no time at all. <laughs> I think it looks as bad in your hand as it felt in my jaw. We're ready. Got pretty steady hands under circumstances. I have faith that no jury in this town will convict an innocent man. Judge Gerald T. Crenshaw. Place. We got the rest of the jury. Be seated. Say, son, you don't happen by any chance to have a bit of liquid refreshment on you, do you? No, no, nothing. Tell us. How 
come there's no spectators in this courtroom? <laughs> it's a very astute question. The court of New Aces County in the state of Texas is now in session. Mr. Prosecutor, Seth Warner. Your Honor? I'm going to try to prove that Gene Matson murdered Sean O'Ridden, the Indian agent, to the tribe of the Comanches in the New Aces territory, until he was murdered by Matson. Objection, Your Honor. That last statement of the prosecutor presupposes that my client murdered the Indian agent. Objection sustained. Members of the jury will ignore the prosecuting attorney's last statement. Let me put it this way, Your Honor. I'm going to show through the aid of key witnesses, that Gene Masson had a pretty good reason to murder the Indian agent. Objection. Objection overruled. The prosecution has a right to lay the groundwork for this case, or you won't have anything to defend. See yourself. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to show that Gene Matson wanted to own the Indian lands on account of some very valuable ore on said land. And how Sean O'Ridden, teach yourself. Sean O'Ridden, the Indian agent, stood in his way. Gonna prove through respectable, reliable witnesses that Gene Matson proposed to murder Sean O'Ridden and then blame it on the Comanches. Who would run away not wanting to be chased after by the United States soldiers? And Gene Matson would then take office as Indian agent and deed for himself the Indian land. Dr. Madsen makes a very good living as it is. But whoever heard of the Comanches running away? They're gone, ain't they? Anything further, Mr. Warner? No, Your Honor, not, not this time, no. Thank you. Attorney for the defense. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, I'm going to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that my client, Dr. Gene Matson, one of the most eminent citizens of our town, could not possibly have committed the murder of which he's been accused. <coughs> <coughs> prove that Gene Masson not only did not have the motive or the desire to commit this murder, but he had neither the opportunity nor the possibility to do so. The first witness is Nate Hahn. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yeah. Be seated. You are Nate Harmon, proprietor of the Blanton Cafe. On the 21st night of this month, Nate, Sean O'Reardon, the Indian agent, was shot in the back on the road in the Noises territory. Earlier that evening, he had dinner at your cafe, right? Well, while he was having dinner, Gene Matson, the accused, entered the cafe and sat at the table with him. Right? Uh, Gene stopped in to have a cup of coffee with Sean. Well, you told me immediately after the crime that they had a violent argument. Well, uh, no, they... There was some loud talk, but well, that, that Indian agent always had a lung full of air. I wouldn't say there was arguing. Uh, I'd just say there was talking loud. You told me that Sean accused Gene Matz of trying to steal the Indian lands. Oh, no, sir. I, I went back into my kitchen about that time, so I didn't hear nothing. You positive? You, you don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure positive, Seth. Okay. Your Honor, 
this this witness is repudiating the statements he made to me. As far as I'm concerned, I consider him unreliable. I'm through him. But I'm not, Your Honor. What time did Sean leave the cafe? About half past six. What time did Gene Matson leave? Just about half hour later. I'd say about seven o'clock. Keep that in mind, gentlemen. Sean, the Indian agent, left the cafe at 6.30, and Gene didn't leave until half an hour later. 30 minutes, gentlemen. 30 minutes later. <laughs> town of Blanton. It's 15 miles to the West's territory. Sean O'Riordan was found here, shot in the back. 15 miles, gentlemen of the jury, from Blanton to the place where Sean O'Riordan's body was found. The fastest horse in this territory couldn't possibly make that distance in less than 30 minutes. At 6.30, Sean left the Blanton Cafe. At 7.15, his body was found by Sheriff Tom Brackett. It is a known fact, gentlemen of the jury, that the morning after O'Riordan was killed, the Comanche tribe, consisting of 75 men, women, and children, picked up and left that territory for parts unknown. How are you said about the time, Sheriff? Well, this hasn't lost a minute in five years, I can remember. Your witness. No questions. Step down, Sheriff. It is my contention, gentlemen of the jury, that the Comanches killed the Indian agent, Sean O'Riordan, under the mistaken belief that he'd betrayed their interests, and that they then departed before United States soldiers could intercept them. Now, gentlemen, it has been testified that Dr. Gene Matson was still in the Blanton Cafe at 7. He could not possibly have covered those 15 miles in 15 minutes. A mile a minute to deliver that shot is alleged. I say it is obvious to any thinking man that my client is innocent. Your Honor, I humbly suggest that you instruct the jury to bring in a verdict of not guilty. Your Honor, before we let the defense run shot over this case, there is a witness, a key witness to be called. Mrs. Ann O'Reardon. Mrs. O'Reardon? Oh, Your Honor, do you have information about the missing witness, Sheriff? A lack of information is more like it, Your Honor. Martial art here was assigned particularly to hunt for Mrs. O'Reardon, wife of the murdered man who is the county star witness. Well, I hate to have to report this, Your Honor, but Marshal Art and I have turned this town inside out. And it seems witness has disappeared from the face of the earth. Gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the evidence presented in this trial. And if you find the accused guilty as charged, you will bring in verdict of murder in the first degree. If you find there is a reasonable doubt that he committed the crime, you will bring in a verdict of not guilty. In either case, you must reach unanimous agreement. Have to take that hardware, Hans. It's no small room for 12 men to be locked up in. 12 live men are going in, and we'd like to see 12 live ones come out. Thank you. I'll take her, Ned. Care say anything before we vote? Yeah, I need a drink, bad. I'm so dry, my mouth and inside are shriveling up. Is, uh, anybody got a pint? How about you, Whiskers? A half pint, me. All right, get on with you. Well, what are these for? That's our battle plan. If you think Gene did it, you write them guilty, like, well, for you, if you think Gene did it, you make a check mark like this. If you think he didn't do it, you make a cross mark like this. Uh, 
Like that? One thing will come out of this trial. Clem will be an educated man. You understand, John Red Cloud? It's better hear he talk. He can. But for a long time, he's chosen not to. Well, are we getting on with it or aren't we? Well, don't carry on so, mister. We had it all spelled out for us. It ain't gonna take but one vote to set things right. I suppose we should elect a foreman of the jury. Well, you're the smartest, Mr. Clark. You be foreman. Well, he's one of the smartest. I think we should take a vote. <laughs> the next thing you'll be wanting to vote on whether I'm going to stand up or sit down. You be foreman, Jason. It's all right with me. How about the rest of you? Yeah, it's yeah. all right. It's all right. Well, gentlemen, the vote. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Guilty for not guilty eight. Well, it's as plain as nose on your face. There was more than just a reasonable doubt about the fellow being guilty. Man has a right to vote as he sees fit. He does not have a right to vote as he sees fit. He's got to vote on what went on in that courtroom. Gentlemen. Well, you heard it for yourself. That prosecuting attorney couldn't make his own witnesses lie for him. Then couldn't even come up with his key witness if he had one. He had one. Anne O'Reardon was the Indian agent's wife. She knew she'd never see justice done, so she took off for Austin to see the governor. Have some Tex Rangers sent in here to take the town away from Gene Mazin. She's behind a drink worse than I think. I thought her wife couldn't testify. She's going to testify for, not against. Oh, the difference? Well, it don't make sense. Gene Mazin, a killer. No, sir. Not the way he fretted over me. A total stranger when I come in here with a bad jaw. Wishbone, that has nothing to do with it. Now, don't tell me you were one of them guilty voters. I voted not guilty, but your job has nothing to do with this. Uh, Mr. Madsen, he's a bad one. Everybody's scared. Now, Miss Janet, don't you worry about your husband. A little cough isn't going to kill him. It's worse when he's under a strain. Much worse. I wonder what's taking him so long in there. Don't worry about a thing, Jane. The verdict can only go one way. Well, thanks for the encouragement, Seth. I thought I had a way to find out what's going on there. Yeah, I took care of it. Eight not guilty. Four guilty. Well, that's normal and healthy. The first time around. <laughs> Maybe the Gene Matson owns this town. If he did, why did he ever let this child go on in the first place? Because he knows Ann O'Riordan and tends to return here with a company of Texas Rangers. But it won't do her any good. Why not? Because of the double jeopardy law. A man can't be tried twice for the same murder. That's why he runs this trial. If he's acquitted, all the law she can bring can't force another trial. Are you trying to tell me that prosecutor's crooked? Prosecutor, the defense attorney, every official in the town. Even the judge wishes he wasn't here. Well, I don't believe it. Not this day and age. There are 432 people in this town. And you figure it peculiar there was only one spectator in the courtroom? That's because she's the wife of Arthur Hanniger. And uh, concerned about his health. Everybody in this town drifted away when this trial was announced. 
Nobody wants to serve on the jury. No one wanted to watch the trial. Well, if Messon's got the town locked up like you say, why doesn't he have his own men serve on the jury? Because he needed them as special deputies. They had to chase down the witnesses and see that they testified with uh, integrity. Well, there's 12 men right here in this room, isn't there? <laughs> there sure is. Everyone's a beaut. Except in your drover friend, of course. We were picked for what we are. Those of us who are weak, misfits. We can be controlled. Well, I suppose you're one of those guilty voters. One of the brave ones who figures that poor man's got this town between his teeth. No. I voted not guilty. I figured this stinking town deserved Jim Matson. You voted not guilty because you're scared. Yeah. I'm lazy, shiftless, no cop. I don't deny it. The rest of you are all superior to me. Ellis, you can drink me any day in a week. Davish, sell his mother if you thought it would make it easier for him to peddle his goods. And Clem, he couldn't tell a piece of iron unless it was in the shape of a horseshoe. Mort, <laughs> he's in love with his warehouse and general store, and he thinks if he plays his cards right, Gene Masson let him be mayor. All right, you had your say, no good. Only part of it. Just want to let hot tongued bearded gent know who he's tied down to. Oh, John Redcloud, the noble red man. He was thrown out of his tribe for stealing. Hasn't opened his mouth since. You have to kick a man while he's got his face in there. Mr. Bill Cullen. Now, his job depends on Gene Matson. He works in his bank. Only thing that could ever rile him up is uh, if he got his clothes mussed up. <coughs> Arthur is sick. Jump! Clem. Don, just table boy. Anybody can push him around. Thanks. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. The only thing I admire about myself is that I'm never ashamed. Now, Jason, now, get himself a brand new print press from St. Louis. He figures he's going to use it to make a brand new town out of Blanton. <laughs> and Gene Matson knows it's the only press within 2,000 miles here. Now, look, Ed, we're not trying each other. Well, let's try voting again. Well, there's no sense voting again when we talk this thing off. What's going on with these people? It's their backyard, and we gotta get back to the herd anyway. Well, there's one thing I'm not part of a herd. I do my own thinking. Nate Harmon, the restaurant owner, was testified. He was afraid to say it in open court, but he saw Gene ride out right after the Indian agent. Well, how do you know that? He told me. Not only that, but he heard Gene threaten to kill Sean. Gene Matson and his men have preyed on this town for five years. They've taken over pretty near everything. But that wasn't enough. Gene wanted the Indian land, and he did everything he could to drive the Comanches off. Ask John Redcloud. <laughs> See? Even though Matson's defense lawyer accused Redcloud's tribe of killing Sean, still he's afraid to open his mouth. He's afraid Gene might give him the same thing he gives Sean. You heard it. The only man standing Gene Matson's way was the Indian agent Sean O'Reardon. And Gene took care of that. Well, how come the prosecuting attorney let it out like that if Matson's his boss? What's Matson got to lose? Having the trial look honest. We're supposed to be passing on what went on out in that courtroom. But we're talking around it and up and down it and inside and out it, but we're not talking about it. Mister, you and your friend will be back on the Sedalia Trail the minute this thing is over. The rest of us have got to live here, or try to. If we act with courage and determination, we can get rid of him now. Shall we vote again, gentlemen? <laughs> Clark 
and Billings. Well, now, it's not gonna do anything but to discuss anything. Now, there's ten guilty and two not guilty. Well, now, I don't know who the other one is who voted with me, or whether his mind can be changed or not. But all the discussing in the world is not going to change mine. Now look, be reasonable, Wishbone. Only a mule won't listen. Now, even if you don't <laughs> now agree, you, you stay can... out of this and keep on your own side of the fence, young fella. We've exchanged our views. Let's have another vote. There's been a lot more guts shown here than I ever expected to see. We're not going to change the vote of this old goat. But maybe we can make it 11 to 1 and start wearing it down. Now, listen here, you. We might as well have another vote, gentlemen. Ain't it, Jason? Well, smash it. That's what they'll do. Smash it. Find a drink. Why don't they sell a drink? They're only bluffing, Jason. They wouldn't dare smash your breast. I'd warn me if I didn't vote right. I'd let him think I would. How could they know I didn't? Nobody's left this room. They couldn't possibly know. Jason, if you gave in, we're finished. They're only bluffing, I tell you. Maybe. Gentlemen, we better have another vote. It's only a fire. Well, it's burning. I think it's your warehouse, Mort. Now, now, I'm getting a lather. Your warehouse is burning pretty good, but I think we can save your store. Somebody in this room has passed out information. Yeah. Mighty peculiar the way they pick on the two of you who've been doing most of the talk against them. I find the spy. Vote not guilty or you're 12 dead men. Well, a little while there, a little respect for some of you. If that's the way you want it, I'll go along with it. Like I said, you deserve Gene Matson. Well, look, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, if this trial is a double jeopardy set, like Jason says, there, uh, it's essentially they're not going to murder us and start the thing all over again. Might as well be dead. Well, it's your town. You people do what you want. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. I tried. Guilty is sin. What's the matter with you now? Well, it was that rock through the window convinced me. Look here, man. There are 11 men here who feel that Jim Matson should go free. Well, it's as clear as the supper gong at sunset. The men must be guilty. Look, before the last vote, you stood high and mighty unreasonable doubt of the man's guilt. Now, just because a rock comes through that window doesn't prove he murdered anyone. Well, if you can't see it, there's no point in me trying to explain it to you. Well, listen to me, you old goat. Now, we got no right to come in here and tell these people what to think. We got no right on this jury anyway. But we are on it. And so long as we're on it, nobody inside or outside of this jury room's going to tell me what to do. Well, least of all, you. Not guilty 11, guilty 1. 
Can't let this go on any longer. What do you want to do? Well, we have to do something to hurry up that jury, or Anna Reardon will show up, or maybe the governor himself. Let him off for lunch. Now, look, Wishbone, be reasonable. The point is... I mean, now, you haven't got years enough under your belt to make points to me, Ruddy Yates. Now, I don't want to see nothing or hear nothing or feel nothing to you for the rest of my born days. Time for lunch. Be back in an hour. Tell you you had big mouth. Are you telling me? Give him his gun, Tom. You know what? We got a nice peaceful town here. We're gonna keep that way. Mister, I've got something to tell you. What? I can't tell you here. It's too dangerous. in trouble. What? The little man with the whiskers. He needs your help. Well, where is he? In the shed behind the feed store. You'd better hurry. Guilty! Not guilty. Guilty! Not guilty. Guilty! Friend to vote not guilty. Or well, two of you'll get a steady diet of this till he does. Come on. Roddy? What do you want, Miss Vaughn? I'm sorry, boy. I didn't mean to cause you this. Yeah. I still say guilty. So do I. <laughs> and let us in on the fun. That one gave you the bottle in the courtroom. That your wife? Yes. She let us in for this. 
Madsen was threatening to foreclose our place. The doctor said I'd die if I went back east. She did it for me. Not much of a man will let his wife betray herself. All right, anybody want to take another vote? What good is all this bouncing back and forth on a deal? There's not enough guts in this room to buck them. You've sure been shooting off your mouth an awful lot. I'd say if they wanted to spy in this room, you're number one to the job. Let's not go after each other again. One thing I know, the side Ed's on is wrong. You mean I can report to Gene Matson that you're going to vote guilty too? If I were sure you were Matson's man, I'd kill you with my bare hands. <laughs> what good's all this gonna do, huh? Well, words they ain't getting us nowhere. Well, they might. There's a man here whose business is words. He can talk better than any of us if he will. How about it, Mr. Clark? We all should be ashamed. Two men we've never seen wanting a squirm, each in his own way. For myself, acquiring a press, I, I lost sight of the purpose of that press. John Red Cloud has committed one crime against his people, and I will compound that by letting the lying accusation of the defense attorney stand that the Comanches killed Sean O'Riordan rather than the man we know committed the murder, Gene Matson. Matson's men burned down Mort's warehouse, and Mort's grateful they didn't take his general store. You know what they made Arthur's wife do. Look at these droves' faces. Now, either we do something about it here and now, or we walk out into the courtroom, admit defeat, and do our best to live with it from now on. Gentlemen, it's time for another vote. <laughs> Guilty. 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 Not guilty. You again. You know darn well it wasn't me. Well, now we can get down to cases. Now we can see how they work it. What do you mean? They put someone on this jury they're mighty well sure of. That's what he means. Well, I don't know how, but somebody's passing information to the other room. That way they can find out who has the guts to stand up to them. Then they can scare the light out of these people. Rowdy and me have got no printing press. We got no warehouse to burn down. So they do this to us. You can be sure they'd never let this trial go on if they weren't sure of one not guilty vote. That means a hung jury, no conviction. It's as good as an acquittal. But who? Who's the filthy spy? So what are we gonna get? What they want? A hung jury? That's what we are. Well, if you got the guts, there's no need for that. You got a way out? Hold an open vote. And that way we shot the spy. Anyone not in favor of open voting? No. No. No, no, no. no. Open vote it is. All those who vote guilty, raise your hands. Gonna get a chance to vote not Billy. 
Not if I have to cook the breath out of him to stop. Why did you do it, Alice? What'd you expect? I'm nothing. Nobody. That's the way you all treated me. The only one who was ever decent to me. Give me odd jobs and shelter and all the liquor I wanted was Jean. You're right, Alice. You're nothing. You're nobody. But did you ever stop to think who made you that way? It wasn't so long ago we all looked up to you. You used to be our town marshal. And a pretty good one, we all thought. Who shoved you out of your job? Who made you grateful to take handouts? I know what happened to me. You don't have to tell me. Who made it happen? It was Gene Matson. One of his men behind the badge. Tom Racken, who has no spine. Harry Yard, a gunman who used to stare at from wanted posters. First they pulled strength out of you, and then gradually the whole town. Think of Jimmy. Think of your son. <laughs> Give me that bottle. He died defending you. He stood up against Art when Art was yelling lies to the whole world about you running your office crooked. It was a fair fight. As fair as it can be between a green ranch kid and a professional gunman. Your son wasn't afraid. Do you think he'd be proud of you now, passing out spy notes, holding out against the rest of us when we finally got sand enough to face up Gene Matson no matter what it costs? Hide from your son. Hide from the world. Go on out and vote not guilty. It ain't fair. It ain't fair kicking a man when he's already dirt under your feet. Sober enough for what you're saying? I'm sober. I remember Jimmy and on his memory, I'll vote Gene guilty. They're counting on you. You may be the first one to shoot. Let him. Because they won't die like I lived. Guilty. Guilty is the devil himself. Well, that's it. At last, we're unanimous. Yeah. Has anyone thought what's going to happen if we go to that courtroom and tell them? Yeah, I have thought of it. Aye, aye. Gene Monson is going to have his gunman in there to shoot us all down. This is our town. We've got a big stake in it. But you two have got nothing to gain. I'll tell you, let's just get it over with fast. My partner and I got a herd to catch up to. Yeah, I've been in more one-sided fights than this. Well, just the same. What are we going to do if they start blasting at us? Look, there's a circuit judge out there. They're not going to kill him. And I doubt if he's going to stay around and watch them gun down 12 men. Besides, with any luck, they won't get more than half of us. We've reached our verdict. know the chance we're taking. You're all ready to run the risk? Alice, you're not saying one thing here or outside. Don't worry about me. I don't like the smell of Jane. They took too long. They know me and they know themselves. I'm not worried. Hear ye, hear ye. Court in Oasis County State of Texas now in session. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have. Will the foreman of the jury... One moment, Your Honor.
court rules that every juror shall rise and state his verdict individually. You are the foreman. You speak first. Guilty. Guilty as sin. Guilty. 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 I guilty. 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 <coughs> Guilty. Ellis Williams, will you rise and state your verdict? Not guilty. Hung jury. Case dismissed. You will release Mr. Matson. Well, I don't know why. Thank, Thank you, Johnny. Johnny. Hey, yeah, congratulations. Never doubted, Rob. Rob. You did a fine job. Thank you. Thanks, Ellis. Thank you very much. You're the only one of the bus that knows which way the wind blows in Blanton. <laughs> From here on, you can have things pretty much your own way. I couldn't let you down, Dr. Matson. Not after all you've done for me and after what you did for this town. All I could do is thank you in the only way I know how. That was my personal verdict. Well, he did call for a trial, mister, not a bullet. So far, he's the only one been charged with murder. Judgment's been passed on him. If you kill him, you might as well kill all 11 of us. Sheriff, I want this juryman held in your custody for trial. The rest of you put up your guns and get out. There will be no more violence in this court. Unless you contemplate shooting me to eliminate a witness. Clear the court right now. Find me when you want me, Tom. You know something? You know what? I should have known he was guilty. There was gold in that tooth, and he kept. Same can't be said for the drovers you hire along the way. It's hard to judge a man by his voice. That's why we keep gaining some, losing others. It's my job to judge, and sometimes I miss. My name's Gil Favor, Joe Boss. on my drive. That man's a gunman, Mr. Favor. A killer. Well, whether you believe it or not, I wasn't going to kill him. I only wanted to make him talk. As long as it's just talk, 
If anything happens to that boy, though, I'll know who did it. I told you. He's a killer. You got proof, Toby? Well, I can get it if you give me a chance. I'll give you a chance to get back to camp. And for your sake, that boy better stay healthy. You made a bad decision, Mr. Favor. And on a cattle drive, a trail boss can't afford to make bad decisions. Get back to camp. Toby's been trying to warn you about Johnny Camber. Hmm? I believe him. That kid does look like the pictures of Billy Carter on wanted posters. And Billy Carter's as bad as they come. All I ask of a man is he does his job. As long as Johnny Camber does that, he stays. All right, boss. Would you be taking the herd through the toughest country we've tried yet with the worst crew we've ever had? You hired a gunman, a camp. I know what I hired them up against. You better stick to scouting, Pete. I'll drive herd. <laughs> Peculiar way of taking a bath, friend. Well, I'm getting ripe. Well, as Mr. Favor always says, do a thing right and proper the first time. You cooking stew again? Now, you know darn well I'm cooking down tallow for lye soap. Oh, well, I should have known. It smells better than the grub you've been handing out. Now, what are you standing there for? Get on back to work. Jed just talking about it. Looks mean and there's a lot of it. Well, it's a wrong time of year. Two or three weeks earlier, even later. Wouldn't have no trouble, but... Jed, when you were a bossing, you lost a herd trying to take it through this way, didn't you? Well, everybody knows that. Why'd you lose it? No use putting old Jed through that, boss. Why, Jed? Well, like you, I tried it at the wrong time of year. And like you again the other day. I had to take on a lot of extra hands I wasn't sure of. How far is it across, Pete? Jed says about 40 miles. Count it most of a week's drive. Can we take her through? Well, this is my first time through here. I can't be sure. What about water? Jed tells me there used to be water out about 12 miles, but not much of it. What about going around? We'd have to cut north through Torlone Pass. It means doubling back. Adds up to two or three weeks more time, but... Jed, didn't you say something about having trouble in Torlone Pass, too? That's right, Mr. Favor. Had to turn back. Of course, that was a long time ago. You take a chance on dried up creeks and streams and the rocky grounds hard on cattle's hoofs. Any better than this? That's hard to say. Two, three weeks. We might run into the same thing. All right, Pete. We'll take him through this way. <laughs> That settles that. Mr. Favor knows what he's doing. He sure doesn't want any company when he goes to making up his mind. You're going to find out, Pete, that the man who has to make decisions is about the loneliest man there is. Cockleburrs in the man's bedroll don't strike me as being funny. I was just fishing out. Who put them there? Well, now I can't tell you. You wouldn't want me to just make trouble with one of your friends. Listen to me, Myers. Maybe you were doing a favor, and maybe you weren't. Either way, if I catch you messing around with my gear again, I'm gonna stretch your ears. Now get away from me. 
It's the thanks Matt gets for being friendly. You're missing anything. You ain't the first one in this camp. Man, let's be sure before he starts talking like that. It ain't so hard being sure of something. But proving it's something else. Talking ain't gonna help either way. That makes you right. I just want to make sure you hadn't taken up swallowing whole steer, horns and all. Cucklebirds. If you hadn't come busting up, I'd had a chance to do something more than just talk. Now look, you know how Mr. Favor feels about trouble with this crew. There ain't gonna be none. Not without a cause. I figure you give a jackpro like Myers enough rope, and he'll throw a loop around anything that ain't tied down. All right, all right. I'm shut. <laughs> How does a man go with something he isn't sure about? You got something on your mind, let's have it. Well, it's Carl Myers. He didn't like around camp. Well, no, I didn't hire him on just to be liked. Well, I caught him going to my bedroll. He said he was picking out some cockburrow, some yahoo bit there. Had him in his hand, too. Isn't much when I said. You missing anything? No. A man deserves the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Got your supplies? You never know the time I didn't. I'm heading into dry country from here on in. Still time to send a man into the corners, anything we need. We do it tonight. No need, Mr. Favor. Check in to make sure. Check in? You'd think I was a green-eared tenderfoot or something. Mr. Favor, can I have a word with you, Private? Nothing you can't say in front of the rest of the men. Just as you say, Mr. Favor. It's about crossing the dry plains. The wrong time. You know it. I know it. But I want you to know that I think you can make it. It's all I've got to say. Don't you listen to him, Mr. Favor. Jed Blaine's been around these parts for a long time. Everybody knows that he lost his herd trying to stake plains the wrong time of the year. He's never been able to live it down. He'd like you to try this drive. Then he can always say he ain't the only trail boss who lost a herd and a crew. You believe that, Mr. Favor? Any reason not to believe it yet? I'm gonna take this herd straight across. Won't be easy, but it can be done. We're gonna keep those cows in the move. You'll eat and sleep in the saddle. Maybe you'll cuss the you signed on. But we're going across. Any man who thinks different can draw his time right now. Only a fool would cut straight across this time of weather. Not only that. Draw your time, get your gear, get out. Anybody else want to go with him? I don't like to wrap out on you, Mr. Favor. But it wasn't just cows that died out there with Jed. It was men, too. I reckon I'll draw my time and string along with Bates. I'll let you, Jed. Well, I signed on, Mr. Favor. I'll stay on. Want to be an eyewitness? Lose the herd? I'll stay on. Howdy. Cash box. Pay those three off. See that I'll camp tonight. Mr. 
say we're sure set in his ways, even when he's wrong. Who says he's wrong? I say he's wrong taking us through this way. And he's wrong thinking old Jed would give him bum advice because he wants to see his herd lost. But Mr. Faber knows more about taking a herd through than you'll ever know, Pete. Even if that's right, Roddy, it ain't for you to say it. Look, I'll say what I want to you or anyone else around here. started wearing it, Billy. My name is Johnny. Johnny Camber. It's been a long while. But I had to make sure you were Billy Carter before I killed you. I told you my name's Johnny Camber. Now I'll tell you something else. Keep away from me. All right, Billy. For now. I just want you to know I knew. Any trouble? No. It's just that I don't understand about us driving across here. Even though the old man did say you have a chance. Bet Bates was right about the old man. Think he was egging me on just because misery needs company. Yeah, but you're risking her just to save a few days. Look, Ray. The price of beef jumps up and down according to supply. Now, you've got to reach the market at a time when the price is high enough to make the drive worthwhile. Yeah, well... Well, why don't you say that to Pete and the others? Why don't you just let them I go I can't on? stop to give a lecture every time I want to do something. They ought to figure it out themselves. So should you. you better turn in. We've got a long day's work ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Undippered old man until we get to some what? Mr. Faber's orders. Why, you old goat, you just love giving orders, don't you? Oh, lay off, Rowdy. What do you get to shoot your mouth off about? Fine job of trick guiding you've been doing. It's Mr. Faber's news and not mine. Not the way I see it. You left him in a hole, not choosing back there at three corners before we started the dry plains. I'm from a kid still wet behind the ears. I'm gonna let that pass. Well, don't do me any favors, Pete. I can take care of myself with you or any other man on this crew. Pete. Mr. Favor wants you. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's too far the shape this herd is in. I asked how far, not what you thought. Keep moving another two, three miles and circle them in. Bring that water tomorrow. Yes, sir. Sugar wishbone. Ain't got none. Thought you uh, checked out your supplies. Well, I did. But I counted a sack of beans instead of sugar. I do it without sweets. Ain't gonna kill none of this hard rock outfit. You did your job right. Wouldn't have to do without anything. Well, that was my fault, Mr. Favor. I thought it was sugar. I don't care whose fault it was. Still no sugar. No excuse for not having any. Oh, I tell you, this outfit falling apart, and I ain't going to take much more of it. <laughs> well, I told you, Pike, is you knew how to play poker. Maybe it's the way you play. And maybe you're just a poor loser. It's better than being a poor winner. Or a crooked one. Well, listen, Clark, get off my back and stay off. I'm getting tired of you on your cracks. Shindig like this, and you're both through. Myers are late for your trick, and I'd heard. No dirty cheat's gonna draw a big sticker on me and get I said that's enough. Some music would make things seem a little better. Shut up, the caterwauler! Just trying to help. You all know that Myers is a thief and a cheat. Mr. Favor had no right taking up for him. You got no call to say that, Clark. Mr. Favor didn't take up for anyone. Well, it seemed that way to me. And you're a poor one to talk. He tried to steal from you, too. You don't know that any more than I do. Well, half the men in this crew are missing stuff from their gear, and we all know who's taking it. There's none lower than a trail camp thief. There's one thing. A woman killer like Blake Carter. Maybe some of you have heard of Billy Carter. Fast gun with ten notches. I keep wondering if he cut another one for the girl he killed. My daughter, Jenny, was just 18 when she ran off with young Billy Carter. I wasn't home when he rode up for a job. I hired on with a herd on the goodnight loving trail. When I got back, she was gone with him. And I went after him. When I caught up with him, Jenny was dead. Killed by a bullet meant for Billy Carter. 
because he was going to have his baby when she died. I've been looking for Big Carter ever since. Boss. Yeah. What are you gonna do about the trouble between Talby and Johnny Camber? Do? What do you expect me to do? I can't wipe the nose of every man in this outfit. I think Johnny Camber's who he says he is. You do? Yes, I do. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I wanted you. I've been loose dirt out here. Make digging a grave really. That's way by Ridge. No graze, though. And we'll have to water him in bunches. There's only room for about 50 head at a time. Right. Now, uh, say, Pete, uh, about yesterday, well, I, I didn't mean to be so sharp with you. I, uh... You don't owe me no apology, Mr. Favor. You're the boss. Right back to Quince and Starlet. Tell them to slow up the main body of the herd. I'll send the point into water first. Break off the first 50 head. Pete says there's water beyond it rise. Take him in, let him drink, move him up to the next bunch to get in. Right. Johnny! Slow him down. Break him in bunches of 50. Didn't you, Jed? It wasn't poison when I got my herd here, Mr. Favor. It wasn't. It was bone dry. I should have turned back and didn't. All right, let's get back to the herd. You'd have gotten a big laugh of this if I'd have taken a drink of that, wouldn't you, Pete? Rowdy, lay off of me. I'm not going to tell you again. <coughs> All right, break it off. Right. Let him up, Jed. He's been asking this for a long time. Stay out of it, Mr. Favor. What's the matter with you? With both of you? Hey, boss, I, I didn't mean to. That's the trouble with this outfit. Nobody means to. It just happens. I don't. Keep moving. Yeah, but only without water. There's none out here for him. Mm. 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 
Time's up. Must be after midnight. Mr. Faber, Pete sent me back. There's water up ahead. Ain't much of it. It ain't fit for humans, but it'll keep cattle from choking on them tongues. How far? About a mile and a half. No more. All right, we'll try to make it. Roddy, back to Wishbone. Have them move the wagon up ahead. I want coffee and sandwiches when we bring the herd in. Wake up, you old good. It'll be a few minutes. Wishbone. Now what? Look at this bread. What's the matter with it? It's hard as a board. Can't you even bake bread? What was driving day after day, every day, and now night after night? When do I have the chance? I warned you. If you can't handle the job right, then say I can't. Get yourself a new cook, Mr. Faber. I'm done. You miss a favor, you think he means it? Mushy, you're the new cook. The men will want those sandwiches in five minutes. What's the matter with you, Wishbone? Oh, get away from me. Go on, leave me alone. I ask you a question. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? What's the matter with everybody around here? What's the matter with Miss Favor? What's the matter with you? Well, I mean quitting like this. You know, Mushy hasn't got the brains to eat the food, let alone quit. Oh, so now my cooking's getting good, is it? Well, you can just darn well thrive on the memory of it, because it's the last of it you're ever going to get. Why, you old coot? Don't you call me an old cook, you whelp? I don't give a hang about your lousy cooking. I don't give a hang about what you give a hang about. Now you get out of here before I... Before you what? Before I blast that whelp face of yours right out from under your hat. You see what I mean now? What's what you mean? You're, you're pointing that gun at me? You want to fire it, don't you? You're mighty well told I want to fire it. Now you get away from me before I blast your... Yeah, I guess I see what you mean. Do you wish? Well, I'm not so sure I do. All I know is a couple days back, you wouldn't have poked a gun in my face no matter how sore you got at me. Something seems to have happened. Everybody's at everybody else's throat like a pack of bobcats. Everybody thinks everybody else is wrong, too. I sure wish I knew why. Well, there's certain times, I guess, when everything's got to go wrong. All wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's the heat. Oh, uh, we've, we've been through heat before. Well, maybe it's Mr. Favor going across the dry plains when he should have gone around. Now, who says he should have gone around? I say. Well, who you say? You're not helping him move any, quitting him when he needs you the most. You think you're being his little helper? Picking a fight with Myers over some cockle burrs and driving at Pete just because you think he was wrong for not warning Mr. Favor sooner? Pete was wrong. Who says he was wrong? I say he's wrong. Who are you to say? Well, I'll show you, you lice bitten old coot. Well, you get out of here before I blast that sniveling wolf face of yours right off of this wagon. Where's my watch, you low-down thieving coyote? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Dead. Rowdy, tell Mr. Favor I'll be back. If I don't. Quince, you and Kyle take care of him. And Joe, go get Miss Favor, will you? Whose gear is this? Johnny Cambers. Well, clean up. Mushy, help him get this gear cleaned up. Jed catches up with that dirty, murdering thief. You letting yourself up as judge and jury. I caught up with him. He might have been real quick with the knife, but wasn't very fast with the gun. Clock had him figured right, Mr. Favor. Almost anything belonging to anybody in this camp with more than a quarter. Right here. Razor, Mr. Favor? Hey, Mudgy, your coffee's boiling out. Thanks, Mr. Roddy. I ain't got the hang of everything yet. Is Wishbone still holding his grouch? Oh, he's lying there, looking up at nothing. He didn't even cuss me out this morning. Well, I've been thinking, wishing things was back the way they was. Well, you ain't the only one. I got a hunch they're gonna get worse. <laughs> Next to this, that poison spring, it tastes good. Mind your dad, Mr. Rowdy. time, Billy, but I had to be sure. All right, Talby. Get your gun, Billy. Tommy, I told you his name is Johnny Amber. You can settle what's between you when you leave the crew. No, Mr. Favor, I'm sorry, but it's got to be settled now. Waited too long to let you or anybody else cheat me. I'm not gonna have any more trouble on this camp. You won't stop me, Mr. Favor. You can't. Big Carter stole my daughter, my only child. And afterwards, he killed her just as if he pointed a gun himself. Well, I'll kill him with my bare hands if I have to. Easy, Tom. Give him his gun, Mr. Favor. There's no use in letting it hang fire. We can end it right now. 
What chance would he have against you? Billy Carter with ten notches on your gun. Stay out of feet. Is what Talby said true, Johnny? I'm Billy Carter. I'll give him his gun. No. You won't need one now. If this is the way you want it, Mr. Favor, I guess it has to be all right with me. Did it kill him? The gun ain't loaded. Why? Going on this way, thinking about her every hour of every day, seeing her face every time I close my eyes. He found her picture, but. He didn't find this. Marriage license. You and Jenny. Why didn't you tell me? Why should I let you think her daughter's name was Miss Billy Carter? It's all over. The day we got married, I let her throw away every shell I had for my gun. And I swore I'd never buy any more. I never have. But the, w the way she died. We just found out she was going to have a baby. She was so happy. Because I just told her we were going back to tell you. But a drunken gunslinger recognized me and drew on me. Jenny jumped between us. She died here in the street. Look, looking up at me. So I was wrong about Myers and Johnny, too. I got no ownership paper saying I always got it right. It's over and done with. I want the herd headed up and moving out in 15 minutes. Mr. Favor. Some of us haven't had a chance to eat yet. No rest and not a decent meal for days. If you think you can keep pushing men like that, you're wrong a third time. I said I wanted that herd moving 15 minutes. And you can move them yourself. Midway Valley's not a four hours drive from here. There's enough grass there to rest the herd. You don't need a scout. You don't need anybody. Anybody else feels the same way as Pete. Taken right out with him. You're all up to yellow quitters. How about you, Jit? Well, I signed on to help get these cows through. I had a herd quit me once, but I never quit a herd. I'm staying, Mr. Favor. Talby, is Johnny able to ride? You say, Talby. You can ride up to help. We're staying. Rowdy, get the cash box, pay him off. Then let's get these beeves on the move. Mushy, you got your wish. As of right now, you're a working cow hand. All right, let's get out of here and get out of here. He did quit. Charlotte or Quince either. What is it? Dry. Dry. 
is a bull. Well, Midway Village just over that rise. Keep moving! Trail boss needs is good judgment. Wrong about Myers, John and Ed. Now it looks like I've been wrong thinking I could get this outfit across the dry plains. Well, the way I see it, a man takes on a job, he ought to see it through. No matter how much he don't like it or how much it costs him. Try turning the herd, boss. Nothing behind him. It's too late to turn back. As you might guess, there's no water. As far as I know, there's no chance finding any water between here and the end of the Dry Plains. Am I right, Jed? That's right, Mr. Favor. That means at least three, four more days with the cattle. If we had enough hands, we could force the cattle across, but with only us, I don't, I don't need to tell you. Can't be done. All I have to do is look at them. gonna be kind of hard to say. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Favor. Don't say it. I guess I know, too. He's the boss. Let him say it. No, that's just the point. I don't have the right to be boss any longer. I'm afraid I proved that. All the other hands realized it and left. For staying with me. Thanks. Now, I don't see how anybody could be Quite as wrong as I was, still give an order and expect to have it carried out. But that's just what I'm going to do. I'm giving you one last order, and I still expect to have it carried out. I want you all to move out on your own. Get through it best you can. Without you? Lack of water can kill you just as quick as it can kill the steers. What are you planning on doing? Staying out here with these lousy cows? I don't know much about droving, Mr. Favor, but if you're trying to get rid of us, you... That's what he's trying to do, son. Oh, now it's time somebody begun to talk sense around here. Oh, that's enough, Wishbone. No, it's not, Mr. Favor. I told you to move on, all of you. That's an order. You trying to get rid of us because you don't want us to sit out here and watch the cattle drop? What do I have to do to get rid of you? Don't you understand? There's no water here. Not only for the herd, there's none for you either. Now, you can get through. You're not tied down with the cattle. So start moving up now. I have to watch my herd, but there's nothing says I gotta watch you. Now get out of my sight, all of you! I ain't got any place to go, Mr. Favor. Me neither. You can do without water for a couple days. I ain't a bit thirsty, Mr. Favor. There, you see, Mr. Favor? You see? You stoop. <laughs> What are you standing around for? Let's see if we can get these lousy cows back on their feet. Mr. Favor, out there. We 
got lost. You got lost? Yeah, I, it's rough out there. Peach, Scarlet, Maine. We couldn't find our way. We didn't know which way to go. We sort of miscalculated, Mr. Favor. It was a small mistake. Natural thing, made mistakes. We figured if you'd sort out a stroll along with you, we wouldn't make no more mistakes. Did you find up ahead? We found some water and the grass is a lot better on the other side of the valley. You'd be wanting to take them straight through? Yeah, Pete. Straight through. Well, you're going to stand around up here all day, or you're going to earn your pay. I'll be glad to see you, you old brush popper. <laughs> <laughs> What else would you expect a crew like yours to do, Mr. Faber? You had the right hunch all the time. Looks like you're going to make it. We'll make it, Jeff. Bringing a herd up through the plains of Texas on the civilian Missouri Trail, you need three things. One of them, air, we have more than enough of. Another, grass, usually in good supply. The third is another story. It's always with us. The need for water. Sometimes it's a real job to find it, and it's my job. Gil Favor, trail boss. You mean your cattle? These cattle belong to Mr. Favor's herd. I'm taking them back there. You ain't sent them nowhere. You look at their brands, Mister. I looked at them. Brands can be marked over easy enough. You want to do this here one at a time? One at a time. Which one is going to be first? Come on, let's get him. Like it better down there than you do in the saddle? J 
joking's about as funny as you scouting, Pete. At least I managed to stay astride. You're gonna have to learn to have a low branch of wide berth, Rowdy. I'll knock your teeth down your lousy throat when we got time for it. Right now we got business. Some Jasper jumped me. Oh? How many? Well, there were four of them. They made off with about 20 of our cattle. Can't be far over that ridge, though. We can catch up to them. Now, wait a minute. That's for Mr. Favor say. Look, the herd's two miles back there. We'll lose a lot of time riding back there. There's only four of them. There's only four of them that you saw. You don't know how many of them there are waiting over there. You scared Pete? No, I'm not scared. Mr. Favor runs this outfit. Well, that's what I said. Let's go get Mr. Favor. <laughs> Come on, Pete. Didn't pay any mind to our brand, huh? Quince! Pilot! You can see our brands weren't fresh and marked over. Some men uh, borrowed 20 of our cattle. We're gonna go collect them. From the way he said a load of Rowdy, they might not be too obliging. Let's go, boss. Rowdy, you take over the herd till we bring them back in. I've got a score to settle with. That's just what you're saying. Right here's where I found Rowdy. Looks like they go this way. Six of them. Less than two miles from the herd, and they're stabbing our beef. Think I know the man in charge. Pete, you and I'll go in. Scarlet, you and Quince cover us. You can tell your men to put up their guns, Jess. Put it down. You have business with me, Favor? You know I do. Well, spit it out. Man's got something in his mind to like him come straight out with. I'll come out with it. I'm driving a herd in the Sedalia Trail. You're bossing a herd now, huh? Come a long way since I first laid eyes on you. First time on Sedalia. Not my worry, somebody put a herd in your trust. My steers carry my trail brand. Nothing new or great about that. Us old-timers always had a trail brand. You look real hard at those steers you're about to brand. You'll see what my stamp looks like. Meaning? Meaning your brand and my cattle. You accusing me stealing cattle? You must have seen a dust. You knew there was a herd going through. I knew your herd was passing through. You've been dropping off strays all over the prairie, careless-like. One of my men tried Hayes' men. Your men jumped him. But then I'm not telling you anything you don't know, am I? The man we jumped was trying to take Mr. Ho's cattle from us. Ho's cattle wearing our brand? You're forgetting the law, son. Strays and brush cattle on the open range. Finders, keepers. And whose law is that? Mine. I can make it stick. Is that how you're building up a herd? Finding other people's strays before they're lost. I need your cattle. I got enough of my own to buy and sell you. But a careless trail boss deserves to lose what he can't handle. You used to be a trail boss, Jess. What would you do in my place? My day, I had no problems. I used to arrive at the railhead with more cattle than I started with. No doubt about that. 
Jess, I've given you every chance to say you made a mistake. Now I'm picking my strays back. Feet, stays them in. I came here expecting to catch up with rustlers. Now I'm taking them back with or without a fight. Up to you. You want a fight, we'll sell you one cheap. Let him go. But well, Mr. Hold, you said let him go. Let him take him. He'll give us more on this bunch later. Without a fight. for a lizard. Small one at that. Have to move the herd on to Crater Wells, then. If there'll be any water there, there doesn't seem like there's a drop in this part of Texas. Should be. I've heard the wells is one of the most dependable water holes in the whole drive. What happens if it ain't? We get there and see it's dry. Be plenty of time to start worrying. Sorry, boy, no water. The herd can't stand much more of this heat without water, boss. They can stand a lot when they have to. Sometimes it's harder on the men. How far is it to Trader Wells, anyway? About three miles should be there before dark. make a habit of shooting at people you don't know? Just another warning, Mr. Fever. Warning for what? Not to come in, to move on. Take your cat and go around. And why? This is private water. Private? This is open range. This water's free to all. It's private range now, and it's private water. Oh. Just hoes, I suppose. Just hoes. Look, this cattle have got to have water out there. I got my orders, mister. They say to move on. You ought to know Mr. Holt means it. You know there's probably no water for another 20 miles. I'm telling you. You better head off your herd before you get this smell of water. You don't stop them, we're gonna have to shoot them. Mr. See, because of the drought, there's not enough water to go around. It's either your cattle or ours. So you're just gonna make sure by taking over the water hole. It's our land and our water. My father has a right. Your father? I'm Jim Hode. I want to talk to your father. Where is he? At the ranch. How far is that? Hours ride. All right, let's go see him. All right. But turn your head first. Get it down, Pete. Hold it if you can. And don't get in any fights. We'll be back for some up. You think you can change the man Hode's mind? 
You got any other ideas? Yeah. Okay. Jim, there isn't... Oh, no, Ma, there's no trouble. These men just want to see Pa. My name's Faber, Mrs. Hody. This is Roddy Yates. Honored to have you. Won't you come inside? Well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Hode, but uh, we can just see your husband. Well, he's, he's down to the ground, Jim. Oh, sure, Ma. No, you just come inside and wait in the parlor. We can wait out here. Well, we're uh, kind of dusty. Please, Mr. Favor, please come in. Ryan here, in the parlor. This is very nice, Mrs. Hogue. Well, it sure is. This is the prettiest parlor I've seen since... Uh... Oh, boy. Pretty I've seen since San Diego. Oh, go on, sit down. Oh, well, we don't want to get nothing dirty, ma'am. Oh, you don't need to fear that. You don't need to feel uncomfortable. That's why Mr. Hope doesn't like this room. He says it makes him feel uneasy. But I don't mind cleaning up a bit of dirt. You sit down. All right. You know, that's what room's for, to be used. I don't mind cleaning up afterwards. But Mr. Hode, he says it's foolishness having a parlor like this fit for visiting ladies when there ain't any ladies to visit. No closer than two, three days by buckboard. I guess you are pretty much alone. And you haven't come on any social visit, have you? Well, not exactly, Mrs. Hode. It doesn't matter. It's a pleasure to have you. You'll stay the night, you and your friend. I'm afraid we have to get back to the herd. Well, you, you'll stay for supper at least. Sherry, I'll... there ain't no need of that. Howdy, trail boss. I figured you could talk. All right, come on. Jess, you could talk in here. This ain't female talk. We'll make ourselves easy. Come on. Thanks, Mrs. Hoden. It's a real nice parlor. We uh, don't need the young'uns. Boy, show them the place. The pot. You might... hear? All right. Come on. Out the shed. Only place around here a man can take his ease anymore. Same liquid fire you always used? Same. Tan hide to cut the fat off you. You better have some. Thanks. The same. But some said this acid is what made you the toughest boss in the Arizona Trail. You think so? I always had it figured the other way around. This was the only thing that had improved your disposition. Uh, there was something else eating in your guts. You figure that? I finally figured you were just born mean. Born fighting. Born working anyhow, and I'll die that way. You young uns coming in here and taking over the hoods. You think you're put in my place because your boss heard better? Do you know more about trailing than about cattle, about men? You think you was tougher? <sighs> no, sir. Just the owner's I was too old. Too old, me. I could always spit a man younger than me, still can. Man is never too old to ride, fight, or boss. Just some ignorant jasp think that he is. Wait till it happens to you. So that was it. Oh, 
always knew you had no use for me. Just couldn't figure out why. Now, you're going to find out that I can still fight, and that I'm still the boss. I didn't come here to fight. Came about water, Jess. You're on my range. You want my water? No. You know you got no real claim to it, Jess. Who's got better? Who come this waste and built this place? You got a herd out there needs water? Well, I got cattle, too, a lot of them. Yeah, I know how you got it, too. Sure, I took other people's strays. Scrub cattle, put my brand on them, why not? A man's got a love for himself. Jess, you must like being hid. This is business. Friendships for small boys. Now, uh, like I said, I got cattle, too. There's water enough for both, and you know it. But what's your price? Half. Half? And I'll do the picking. You bring the herd into water and leave half. That's my price. You know I can't do that, Jess, even if I wanted to. Those are my cattle. I'm just running them for others. An awful lot of small ranchers that he wiped out if only half this herd gets through. You're breaking my heart. You think I'm too old to be tough? Too old to be boss? You're not bigger than law, Jess. This has always been open range, free all. You're not gonna change that. You, uh... You take your herd on to Wolf Creek in the morning. If I bring them into water here anyway... We'll be waiting. Thirty men just waiting, looking on rifle barrels. Can you handle that, Mr. Trail Boss? <laughs> you want to, you, you try. Have another drink. Oh, Mr. Favor, I just came down to see about supper. Afraid I won't be staying, Mrs. Houghton. Sorry. Are you sending him away? That's up to him. Couldn't you have helped him whatever he needed? Couldn't you have made a friend? We don't need no friends. Don't we? Goodbye, Mrs. Oden. You're a vicious man, Jess. Carry your Virginia softness never has changed me. Oh, I gave that up. You're what you are, and I've lived with you this long. But, Jess, I'm not going to have my boy grow up in your image. He's a hoe, ain't he? I'll send him back east. No, you won't. He's my boy and wants to be here. Carrie, a man's got to be hard. I kick some of that substance out of him, he'll be fit for the world. You'll see. But Mr. Favor, you just got to understand. There just isn't enough water. Yeah, sure, son. You go right on believing that. Right, isn't it, Pa? There isn't enough water. It ain't too much. It's too bad you had to turn him down. You used to be a trail boss just like him. I was a trail boss, but never like him. My day we let nothing stand in our way. My herd was thirsty, I watered them. What if some answer stopped you? Nobody stopped me, boy. They just tried. I never liked favor. I didn't run. I fought. I don't think Mr. Favor ran, Pa. Well, you can still see his dust. Well, he walked away from you just bloodshed. Sometimes it takes more courage to do that. Courage? Before you start talking about courage, you better show some of it. I ain't seen a sign of it in you. Maybe you have. Maybe I haven't got the kind of courage you're talking about. But you didn't answer my question. You sure there isn't enough water? I'm sure there ain't enough water. For him. <laughs> It's gonna be awful hard to keep him going. I know that water's back there. Just keep after him, Pete. Keep him from head back. Yeah, if we can. You know, I think we ought to have that fight back there. No, Pete. Money's not worth men dying, ours or his. We've got a good chance of getting through to Wolf Creek. 
Who's that? Well, I just came out on the chance, Mr. Favor, that maybe you'd let me ride along. Ride along? You tell your father we're moving on to Wolf Creek and we won't be needing an escort. My father has nothing to do with this. He doesn't even know I'm here. He'd probably skin me alive if he found out. Then why are you here? I've been back east to school for six years. I've got a lot to learn. I figured maybe I could learn from you, Mr. Favor. I've never been a cattle drive before. But maybe I could ride along for a couple of days, do my share of the work, pay for my food. What do you think, Pete? I don't know, Mr. Favors. Some of the men won't like it. His old man's gone. The boy's not to blame for what his father does. The men will know that. Maybe. You sure you want to do this? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Can't do any more harm. Another hand will be welcome for a couple of days. Just one thing. Don't get in any arguments with men. Tempest is short enough as it is. Keep your mouth shut, do it told. Yes, sir. give a lot to be an airplane right now. My foot on the bar and a big shot of red eye in my hand. Ooh. Well, they say the hotter the drink, the cooler it makes you feel. I should have brought some of my father's special whiskey. <laughs> Liquid fire. You ought to have brought some of your old man's water. Slow. Fill our canteens, water our horses. Maybe tonight, if we don't find better, we can bring the extra horses, water them in relays. That's if it lasts. What about cattle, Mr. Favor? Quite like a water hole back at your old man's place, is it? any signs of it getting better. I hate to see you lose your cattle, Mr. Favor. We won't lose too many, as long as there's water at Wolf Creek. Go on ahead and scout it, Pete. All right, let's get moving. <laughs> Which bone I'm gonna pick the herd? Save me a slice of that fresh loaf. If you want to hang with it, you're gonna have to milk one of them steers. Boy, man sure was right when he said if he owned Texas and hell, he'd rent out Texas and live in hell. Boy, ain't that the truth. Anybody want any more? Ain't nothing to go with it. 
Tell me, Wishbone. You think we'll make it through all right? I don't know. I ain't seen it worse than this. It's going to be a hard drive. One ain't none of us going to forget. Yeah. Well, it's one of us I hope don't forget it. Enjoying your meal, Mr. Hode? Too bad there isn't any coffee to go with it. But some fella back there at uh, Trader Wells needed all the water. Now, look. My father's got a herd of his own to look out for. You think our herd's gonna drink up that whole pond? Maybe not. Or is your old man's herd bigger than I hear it is? Well, he's got plenty, I reckon. He ain't got any neighbors to bother anymore. Yeah, well, he packs a lot of rope. He's too wide a loop, I figure. <laughs> I'm your old man's little killer with a branding iron. That's what I mean. Oh, go on now. Them just little old brush mavericks. Critters he picked up on the wide open prairie. Or so he says. I'd hate to turn your hides inside out. Might make a liar out of it. Now, wait a minute. My father's got a big herd. That's right. But that don't mean he stole them. Doesn't it? No, it doesn't. And I don't ever want to hear you call him a thief. I'll call him one of you two if I feel like it. Stay out of this, boss. I'm, I'm whipping myself a kettle baron, like I always wanted to. Uh, well, you got so much energy, you go out and ride night herd or what? Well, what are you sticking up for him for? What's he doing around here anyway? Spying for his old man? Picking out his half, something? Get going, Roddy. We don't want no holding camp. I said move. Now, that goes for all of you. I'm gonna take every hand to keep him on bed ground tonight. They're so water hungry, they won't even lie down. Nobody gets any sleep. Now move out. What about him? What is it? Don't you hear so good? Jim. Wait a minute. Mr. Tabor, what did Roddy mean? Picking out my half. Well, that's something you'll have to ask your father about. I told you not to argue with him. Yeah, I know, but they were talking about my father. They said he stole a herd he runs. That isn't true, is it? Like I told you, some people talk. Is it true, Mr. Favor? He grew up in a different world. It'd be tough. He was. Maybe we owe him a lot for it. But, but like a lot of old men, he won't change. And the world around him keeps changing. But maybe someday, sometime, you'll be able to help. Now get on back to the herd. Yes, sir. Scouted Wolf Creek up down 10 miles or more. Not a trace. Leave enough for the horses. Which means we won't have any water before we get Red Rocks. And that's three days normal driving, four days this way. I don't think they can make it. What are we going to do, boss? Only one thing to do. Back to Trader Wells. Better happier than none. Well, we want to go back there, but we want to go back and fight. Yeah, let's not let the old... It's guy. not worth it. You give him to hold now, you're gonna lose about half your men. You and I might lose you. Maybe. 
maybe with only half a herd on them and half the men. Mr. Fitter? What do you mean, half a herd? Your father's water comes pretty high. Maybe I could talk to him. You think you're leaving here, you out? My name's Hode, too. I can live with it. I'll ride in with you at sunup. We can do our own talk. Yeah, our own way. That's enough. Rowdy, you take the horses out and warm them at that sea pool. Scarlet, you let the herd go. They'll head back toward the water they know. We can gather them in the morning. You think he's even gonna make a dent on that old cuss? I'm afraid it's not too late. Well, then what you gonna do? You gonna give in? You gonna fight? Well, let's take care of right now first, huh? And get with the herd. Where you been? I've been half crazy. I'm all right, Ma. Where's Dad? In the shed. Mr. Favor. Trouble's come, hasn't it? Maybe. Pa? Well, well you're getting mighty independent, ain't you? Taking out like that. Where you been, huh? You been with me. You go, you on a cord, Jim? Father, something I gotta ask you. I'm asking you, how is it you went with him? I wanna learn. Trail herding? You could have learned the best right here at home. That whelp never saw the day your boss heard as good as I can. No matter who says I'm too old. I figured you'd be back. I heard how it was up here. Pa, did you demand half of Mr. Favor's cattle for the water? You got an advantage, boy. You take it. Time you learn that. You can't do that, Paul. They need water. There's plenty now. I know that. You can let them have it. Nobody's got to do nothing, boy. Do you hear? I may be old and some, but the time ain't come when you or anybody can tell me what to do. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Think Ma and me. We got your name. I don't want anybody saying wrong things about it. What things? That you're a thief? He tell you the way I started our hood? No, I didn't. You tell me, Pa. All right. Time new. Time you learned what life is all about. You want to be a cattleman? All right, I'll, I'll tell you. They said I couldn't boss a herd no more. Well, I decided I'd show them, build my own herd, boss the whole range, and I'd done it. When we come this place, there was nothing, nothing. And we had nothing. Your mother's little legacy sent you back east for learning. Then I pitch in. Star was almost at first. But with the railroad coming, I knew what beef would mean. And I got it wherever I could. Sure, in the scrub or on the prairie. Well, some of them didn't have brands on them. Any fool didn't have sense or guts enough to look out for his own, deserved to lose them. I built up my herd. With a long rope of brand and iron and maybe a shot in the back some dark night. And I ain't sorry for any of it. Because I ain't poor no more. And nobody tells me what to do. Nobody. Not you! And not you, boy. You want to be a cattleman? That's how it's done. That's for me. You're a hode. You gotta be hard, boy. You gotta have guts. All this is going to be yours someday when I'm gone. You think I want to be hated like you are? No, boy. No! Why, you little brat? Come back here! Jim! Jim, come back here! Jim, stop! You, Faber. You turned my son against me. You nose in my business. All right. You want water? Well, the price has gone up. You can have the water for the cattle. All of them. Even trade. 
That's no trade. He knows that. Just tis for making me fight. I'll turn tail and run. Now you bring your cattle into water. Go ahead. We'll be awaiting. Mr. Fever, I don't know what to say. You tried, Jim. Thanks. Well, you can't fight them. They outnumber you. Either way, we lose our kettle. And you know my boys won't run. Sorry. Oh, Mr. Fever, run for your life. He's a crazy man. He won't hesitate to kill you. Run and take my boy with you and... Send him back east where he can have a decent life. I can't do that, Mrs. Hogue. And Jim will have to make his own decisions. Goodbye. you coming? Ah, do you know what you're doing? I know what I'm doing. Do you? Yes. I can't come with you, Pa. Can't fight against them. I might have known that you're signless. You've got that same Virginia softness as your mother. You stay here and be a woman. We don't need you. in up there, uh, right back this side of the water and right across the only way in. Any way we can now thank them? I don't know. They're free to move around. We got to hurry to cut them. Maybe we can make the cattle look for us and break through their lines. No, we'll have to leave the herd behind us. If we went in with them, they'd just let cattle through, then pick us off all scattered out like that. We'll stay together. Whatever you say. Hold it, Roddy. He said to help us. Boss, I don't trust him. Let me worry about that. I'm going in with you. Fight your fault. Well, I didn't bring a gun, but I want to be counted with you. I'll bet your old man sent you in here. I don't blame you for thinking that. But I'm here because I've got to be. Maybe I can help out a little. All right. Stay back with the herd. No. I gotta be up in front. Where he can see me. See what he's doing. It's up to you. Mr. Hode. Here they come. We like the word. Yes! This is 
on your head, remember? Jim! Come out of there! You hear me? We can do that, Pa. We're coming in. But tell them to let us through and have to shoot. No, sir. The cannon come. Any man that tries it, he's dead. Then I'll come first, Pa. You can shoot me. Jim! All right. You come ahead. You don't have to go through it, boy. Yes, I do, Mr. Fibber. All right. Let's go. Ready? Jess? Carrie. You better tell them not to fight. Because if you hurt my boy, I'm going to kill you. Carrie, you're my wife. He's my son. And yours, too. I mean it, Jess. Thank you, Jim. He's been sitting like that ever since. Not saying a word, not moving. Take him his food, he just stares at it. Kind of hurts me to look at him. It's hard for a man like him to be beaten by his own family at that. The way he looks at Jim. Now, Jim will do all right. Well. You going now? Catalog watered. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have some cleaning to do. Mr. Favor. I'm glad you came by anyway. Thanks. Well, now, look out there. It's Jim. Time I find out if I can take it. Find out, honey. And they're both drinking out of that old jug. Man now, says... Now, don't scold them, Mrs. Hogan. There's nothing like a jug patching up a quarrel. Just leave them be. Well, I'll stop back sometime and visit. Let's have another.
revoir. You men on the flight, come on up here. Have a large hood, Senor. Favor. Your favor. Senor Favor. So many little things can happen to a large herd, eh? What is your name, Senor? What do you want? I am Major Alessio Viegro, on special assignment from Diaz, El Presidente of the Republic of Mexico. My credentials. Authority has been vested in me by Diaz himself for the arrest of a citizen of Mexico, who is one of your crew. What citizen's name? Francisco Vallejo. He is the second man on your right. Perez, Castillo, take the prisoner. Oh, you better hold it. I shouldn't have to remind you that this is Texas. Texas, for one reason or another, is a member of the United States. Maybe it would be best if I went with us in your favor. Shut Diego. up, Frank. Major Viegro, as you can see, we're pushing the herd. It takes a lot of men. Now, Frank's one of my men. I can't spare him. It's all the same to you. We'll get back to our herd. Stop. He's not all the same to me. You, what is your full name? Francisco Armando Borrero y Carenza. You hear him, senor? Heard him give his name, so? He hides from Presidente Diaz, just like his father. What does that mean to you, Frank? Senor Favor, I joined your herd to work, not to bring trouble. Now I think it's best for me to leave. Why? His father fights Diaz, senor. His father is a revolutionary. Let's have him, senor. Let's take him away from you, for his good. And for yours, too. For his good and for mine, he say. The Republic of Mexico stands or falls upon a drover's decision, eh, senor? Quien sabe? Adios, senor. Hey, those cars are dropping from the flank. Let's get out. <laughs> Quiere que traigamos, mi mayor. Hey, hello. Se va con nosotros más tarde. Vámonos. Señor Eva. Oh. Hey. Linus Frank? I would. Señor Favor, I have to tell you some things. Uh, thanks about time. When I signed on with you, I did not give you my right name. A family name, at least. What's the we get, don't? I should have. What's your reason? I have never believed in fighting, Senor Favor. When my father went to the hills to raise an army to fight, I could not stay with him. Your father, uh, really, General Valero? See. Si. Fighting for what makes sense, the word is. Nothing in the world is worth killing other people for a favor. Those fellas today they figure they get at your father through you. Maybe it would be best if I just rode out. Aren't you sleepy, Frank? Oh, no, Senor Favor. I am anything but sleepy. I am. You should be, too. You mean you want me to stay, Senor Favor? I'm sleepy, too, Senor. Mayor, he came from inside. Mayor Carollo. You are disturbing my sport, Tulio. A visitor, senor. Your mind's wandering. They're outside. You disappoint me, Julio. 
Even a low-born peon like myself knows that one does not permit visitors to stand about outside one's door. And you are a Hidalgo. Or worse. Shall I let him in? See, si, Julio, see. Si. <laughs> eh, Capitan Viegro. My lord, Senor Carroyo. I'm a fool. I should have known by this time you would be a my lord. You'll forgive me, my lord. I have not finished my evening devotions. Your aim is good. My hatred is great. Of lay dolls. Of women. But that's not how you were known in Mexico. That was before my wife betrayed me. You are too high born to ask me with whom, but I will tell you anyway. She betrayed me with death. I am sorry, senor. Who do you kill when your wife dies, mayor? I doubt, senor, it would seem. <laughs> you do not shed tears for my sorrow, eh? Mayor Viegro, you appear lonely, almost naked. Where's the boy? What do you know of him? You receive your orders. I receive mine, too. The president writes a very fine hand. I had much trouble reading it. We found him. We were unable to take him. Why? What is there to taking him dead? He is the son of his father, is indeed. What is there to taking him alive? He is a drover with a cattle drive. He has many friends. How many men do you have besides those two? Lieutenant Perez. Lieutenant Castillo. I am impressed. Six on our side. Julio! Beans, and cheap wine, and quarters in the stables for the six peones. And afterwards, the same for me. Si, senor. And a bottle of the wine you drink for the mayor and his lieutenants. Si. He has expensive taste, that one. Who is he? Don Julio Ramos, a fine Spanish gentleman, eh? The father of my dead wife. You were at the cantina again, Maria. Yes, grandfather. I was at the cantina again. <laughs> and I danced and I sang. Except I think they like my legs more than my voice. Maria, you're a lady. Ladies have legs, Grandfather. Oh, you must be getting very old, you've forgotten. But they don't display that to peon, a Catina, a Spanish rock. You forget who your mother was. I remember who my father is. It's Juan Carroyo, retired bandit. Friend drunkard. The Sedalia Trail approaches Spanish Rock. The herd must come close. Now, if you give us some of your men. I have no men. You own every soul in Spanish Rock, not to mention those on the hacienda. They're all women, all of them. They were not old when you led them in battle for President Diaz. Diego, you are a mayor, but you are also a fool. I led them against fat haciendados. To rob and to plunder. I was not a general. I was not even a mayor. I was a bandido. The Presidente honored you with his friendship. The Presidente honored the votes I bought for him. And then when all was respectable, the Presidente said to me, Juan, it's time for you to go away. You embarrass me. Go to the United States where one bandido more or less won't make no difference. The president was sure you would help. I will not give you any men to attack the herd. Julio will bring you wine soon, very good wine. I'm content here, Viego. I drink. My people make pottery. Spanish rock is peaceful. You are fat and a coward. <laughs> 
You are right. I am very fat. My daughter Maria. My old Viegro. Lieutenant Perez. Mucho gusto. Lieutenant Castillo. Mucho gusto. They want to fight a war against some cattle. Please. Senor, you are speaking of an official mission of the Army of Mexico. He's very good for fighting cattle. If we were in our country, you would have me whipped. I would have you shot. The man is honest, at least. I'm pretty good looking, too, eh, Maria? Yes. Oh, sit down, Mayor. You will not impress Maria that way. Oh, will he? They say Mexico City is very beautiful. Not as beautiful as you, senorita. That was necessary to say, but... It is beautiful. You have never been there? No. Sometimes I think I should live and die here in this place. That is a pity, senorita. But if my mission is successful, it would be a privilege for me to escort you to the city of Mexico. And that was not necessary to say, senorita. So all right anymore. Your ankle? Small hurt. If it were not for you. I'll um, send one of my men back at your horse. I am Maria Carollo. My name's Faith. Send your favor. Will you take me? Noon camp. My cook might be able to accept that ankle for you. You cook? <laughs> I'm not a chicken, senor. Well, I didn't think so. Here's to be all right. Oh, oh. Oh, gently, <laughs> and you're wishful. Sorry, miss. I guess it's a real bad spring. Needs bandaging. Must you, you get me to get the bandages? Trouble picking up the horse? Nah, as gentle as a lamb. Hmm. He uh, had a gopher frightened him. <laughs> Must have been a pretty gopher. Maria Carroyo. Yeah? Oh, uh, my name's Roddy Yates. This is Frank Valero. With great pleasure. Yeah. Arroyo? Roddy, thank you. Better get some grub. Huh? Oh, hmm. yeah. Frank said to get some grub. We'll be grazing the herd here the rest of the day. Si, senor. Son, las mananitas que cantaba el rey David y las muchachas bonitas si las cantaba así. Despierta, mi bien despierta, mira que ya amaneció 
Y los pájaros cantan, la luna ya se metió y el sereno de la esquina me quisiera ese favor de apagar su linternita mientras que pasa mi amor. Wish I knew what to make of her. You may wish you knew whether she had anything to do with the Mexican army. Might as well pick up her horse and keep an eye on Frank. Right. Real nice, ma'am. Real nice. Guess we ought to go to bed. Sarita. Si. I do not believe this matter of a sprained ankle. Oh, it is not sprained. I came here to warn you. Of what? Villagrones men. They plan to attack your friends. They have help from Spanish rock. We meet inside the camp. It's a rock south of here. It's about half a mile. Ankle any better, Miss Correa? I do not think you like me very much. Does it really matter to you? I don't know. A man I'll never see again. My ankle is much better. Hey. Oh, no, senor. In the darkness, cannot see the gophers. Adios. I think I'll tag along after. I'll let her go, Pete. Waited a long time, Senor Bolero. I had to wait too, till all were asleep. Why, you're a big boy. Senor Fayer does not allow droves to leave the camp. You are the daughter of Juan Carroyo. That is what I thought. What is so important about being the daughter of Juan Carroyo? I know you did not come to the camp to help me. Why did you come? Because, Senorita, whatever happens must happen to me alone. Not to my friends. Where are Viegro's men? You have not disappointed me, senorita. Take you. Not just yet. Say goodbye to your friends, Frank. Let's get out of here. Father, would he be proud of him? We will be sure to tell him how bravely his son rode into a trap, tricked by a most beautiful woman. It is not necessary to make speeches. I thought all this would amuse you. So did I. One of the rovers. Bring them both. If you please, son of a great revolutionary general. Two 
where's this going? One from Pete String and the other from Franks. Yeah, add that up to the shooting we heard. I don't like the total. Let's find out what it adds up to. Here. Must have been the Mexican army. Maybe. Your turn, Spanish rock. You get on back to the herd. You're not gonna take the whole army by yourself, are you? Going after the scouts, so. Oh, you and me. Well, if I do, I'll send for you. I'll be back by morning. And if you ain't? Well, you give your orders, then. You'll be true bosses. My congratulations, Mayor. It was nothing. It was less than nothing. Nine men to take a boy, not to mention Maria Ramosa Carroyo. Take the prisoners into the house. No, Mayor. I have killed men, not slowly, not with the cold blood running through my veins. You are Francisco Valero, eh? It is a name I am proud of. Then why did you leave Mexico? I want no blood on my hands. There is blood on your hands now. Who is the American? A friend. Your friends and your father, they are not lucky in you, Francisco Valero. I need a place to question them. Take them to the pottery shed. There is no one there now. I will ask my daughter Maria to sing to me so the noise of your questions will not be annoying. Entertain them in the pottery shed? I'm going to the cantina. It is late, the men are asleep. I drive myself. Maria, I have done much wrong. I did not think that loving too much could be a disease. But now I begin to feel that my love for your mother has poisoned me. And maybe you too, eh? You have said it was late, my father. It is. Very late. Senor, you are all alone. You mean a big bottle of whiskey. No, two whiskey. Those whiskey. Dos. For my friend, of course. Oh, si, senor. What for your friend? Oh, uh, no sense holding down two tables, really. Oh, I didn't think you noticed me, boss. Oh, you didn't come here for did you? Oh, yeah, my horse. Please, he says. Mm. Oh, my friend. Oh, uh, suppose you tell me why you ain't with the herd. 
Well, uh, you, you know, when you're away, I'm the boss, boss, and so I gave myself the order. Counter, and then you're on Oh, look, boss, you, I'm just saving you time. You, you'd have had to send for me anyway. No, but I can send you back. I just got here. Ankle got better, didn't it? And fast. Somebody ought to congratulate her on her fast recovery. Somebody will. We know your father is in Durango. He's a small thing to tell us where. Yet not. I don't know. Ignorance is a painful thing, amigo. My father, fight against ignorance. You are proud of your father, eh? I am. Then why are you not at his side? I was a fool to think that men like you could be beaten you... without bloodshed. You were a fool, and you were still a fool, because you think you will not tell me what I want to know. <sighs> Castillo. Oh, oh. Oh. Hey, stupid. Have them to his feet. Dear son of a great general, Francisco Leo, in the name of the Republic, I ask you to disclose the hiding place of General Bolero. You are here. I, oh. Who is Frank Bolero? Who is Frank Bolero? Oh, that Mexican boy at your camp. Oh, I hardly spoke to him. But you did speak to him. See? I don't know where he is, but I know where he wanted to be. Where's that? Out there with me. Oosh. I hate the smell of whiskey. He wanted to make love to me. You find that hard to believe? No. I find it very easy to believe. Now, after you met him, I did not meet him. Why not? I'm not interested in boys. Is he your chaperone? Tell him that if you like. I do not have a duena. I think it's unfair. Well, going back to the herd. I am going home. Alone? That is for you to decide, senor. When I was a little girl, I used to come here very often to cry. My mother was dead. My father wished I were. You're not a little girl anymore. I do not come here to cry anymore. 
with your arms around me. What did that prove? That I am desirable. That no man with arms around me could think of anything else. Your favor. Rhea, where are the men? I don't like to be slow. I don't like to be bribed either. Now, where are my men? Do you think I came up here just to bribe you? Was I wrong? Now you will never know, will you? And I will never come up here again. Come, senor. I will take you to your men. Servants? Of course. You think I look after horses myself? Senor Feder. Fine servants, Miss Royo. Very well trained. Mm, very well trained. In the Mexican army. Your guns, please. Maybe they don't understand English. Tell them they'd better give me their guns before I have to shoot. Uh, I think not, senor. It's possible they want you to hand over your gun. You're very good at betrayal. I promised only to take you to your men. I will break even that promise. It is too late. I am too tired. They will take you. Llevancelo al cuarto de alfarería. How are you doing, Pete? I'm all right. You came to see me this time, senor, eh? I uh, came for my men. A noble mission. For me, I consider uh, nobility a self-indulgence of fools. This one, for instance, he indulges himself so that he may die shortly, unless... Unless what? Unless when consciousness returns, you advise him to talk. He has been most reluctant, senor. Why should I advise him to do that? For the simplest of reasons, senor. Your desire to live. Will you appreciate, Signorita? It was not necessary to ask. Was it then necessary for anyone to ask, Signorita? It is very late. See, si, it is late. I meant the day, the year. There's no wine in my room. There's no truth or decency either. Juan Carroyo speaks of truth and decency. What do you know about such things? You do not speak to your father that way. I talk any way I like. Not to me! You are my father. Who else has ever struck me? 
We are no good. Both of us, no good. I know. There was never anyone good except my mother. Your mother? It was the worst of all. If she had not died, if she died, I would have killed her. And all this time, you, my mother was dead, you had me believe that she was saint? I know how I hated the memory of my mother. She was dead, but you loved her and had no love for me. So because I thought her good, perfect, almost a saint, I went to the cantina and I danced and sang for them. Do you know why? Because it was the one thing my mother would never do. Now that you've told me, I don't have to be a little girl anymore. Define the memory of a whole person. There's still something for you to learn, Maria. She was not good. She was not perfect. Not almost a saint. But I loved her anyway. That yeah, should be better. That's fine, thanks. It's just the company here I don't like. The choice was yours, senor. Americano, help me. Make yourself useful, senor. Much pottery in the kiln. The heat must not be allowed to die. Julio's devotion to duty was not very convinced. And why didn't you shoot me, too? Why, well, I'm a soldier, senor. I kill enemies only in battle. Traitors of us are another matter. You do not believe me. You are right. I do not kill you because I have another use for you. You haven't said yes to the Aki. Háganse a un lado, puercos. Señorita, what happens here is neither your concern nor for your amusement. And what happened to my grandfather, that is not my concern either. He smuggled guns to the Americanos. He was a traitor. He was a little old man. Anyone can be a traitor, señorita. Young man, old man, even women. 
I help you. Which I owe you much. I shall pay you. In blood? People have strange conception about blood. It washes off easily. I did not think that patriotism meant the slaughter of old men and the torturing of helpless men. Senorita, I would advise you not to concern yourself with patriotism or with what I do here. There must be some other way to do what you must do without all this. No, Maria. The Major's right. After you've led cattle to slaughtering house, you can't complain about how the slaughtering's done. Why did you kill Julio? Senorita, your place is not here. It is a slaughterhouse. Perez, take the lady out, quickly. Thank you, Perez. Now you, where is your father? I don't know. You know he wants to die, but it's too early. He wants to offer his life for the safety of his father. But will he offer the eyes of his friend? Perez, Senor Deva was very kind. He helped to build the fire very high under the kiln. Now I want him to look into the kiln at the pottery. Show him. Castillo, dies in your favor's hands. What? What are you going to do? I am going to ask in your favor to look into the kiln from very, very close. Stop it, that'll bring his eyes out. Possibly, quite possibly. Senor, if I am forced to put another bullet in you, it would help no one. Castillo, Pes! Viegro. Si? If I knew where General Valero was. You would tell me, of course. Is it pity you do not know? I do. The boy has confided in you. Yes. It's the boy shown me. You wish to put a price on your information? I'll tell you. For nothing. Eyes of a man are precious. Where is Herald Volero? It's in the hearts of every one of your people that hate likes of you. Castillo Perez! Slowly, very, very slowly. Stop it! Stop it. There is something you wish to say. Where my father is. Venice! Outside! Get men in the horses ready! Take the cross in your hand. Swear in the name of the Savior that what you say will be the truth. I swear on the Savior. Where is General Blero? The Rio Conchos. Six miles above Saucillo. I have great belief in your piety, senor. But I think I will insist on you coming with us. Your father will be very glad to see you. Castillo! Take him. Adios, senores! Gather up the guards at the gate and go. There is a business here I must finish. Andre. You will see that the men in the pot shed remain here for today, Senor Corroy. I will see to it. You are dressed for traveling, Senorita. See? You are not very good in the matter of the shed. 
I will be very good in Mexico City. I had thought it might be a question of pride. Pride is for men, Mayor. You bring no dresses with you, senorita? I will buy them in Mexico. No. I will buy them in Mexico. But, Mayor Viegro, you are not going to Mexico. <laughs> Well, a shot will bring the others back. We're having company. Get under cover. Wind up a little short handed, boss. Nobody to cook for the few that's left. We round up the Mexican army and we got Frank, too. They were so surprised to see 20 drovers coming at them, they gave up without a shot. 20 drovers? Who's watching the herd? Well, uh, the night guard. Had to do some shooting, huh, boss? No. Croyos took care of that. My father's army. Good luck fighting men, Frank. I have learned one thing about a battle such as my father fights. If you do not go to it, it will come to you. You read his Bible, Frank? See. Good morning, signore. My people in Spanish Rock hold the Mexican soldiers in prison for a little while. We will give you time, Francisco Valero. I am leaving now. We go to Mexico also. You will not object if my daughter and I come along with you. We will not slow you down. Where are you going? Oh, I got to fight here. This uniform is a little too tight for me. I need a new one. Maybe your father will give you one, eh? I think he will. Adios, senor. Maria, I said some things. Oh, I deserve them. All of them except what you said on the rock in the moonlight. It was not meant to be a bribe, senor. Adios. Adios. Adios, Frank. Mm -hmm. 